God damn it, I was high and I thought I was live this whole time. I've just been sitting here talking to nobody for like fucking 10 minutes, god damn it. I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> what a fucking dumbass I am. Uh... What made her this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. Well, I was slow, you know, like a snail in a way, man. I've smoked so much that I thought I was live for like 10 minutes. I was like, <laughs> fucking me. On March 8th, 2019, Brian Frogboy, author of the approved Chris Chan prequel comic, released a YouTube video in which he largely defends Christine and decries the people who obsess over her. We need to stop talking about Chris like she's some wild fucking animal or a fugitive on the run. Chris can be both a person that disgusts you and a human being. Now there's a new form of entertainment through the likes of just reading quickie articles out loud or talking over videos that Chris makes. In fact, I'm actually looking at high schoolers right now making a living off it. In it, he expresses that Chris is autistic and largely is not responsible for her occasional crass comments and foolish actions, and also complains about the relentless followership which continually observes, comments on, and infrequently intrudes in her life and those of her friends and the- No, that's not right. Chris is liable for his actions he's supposed to be functioning high functioning autistic he should be able to know how to act around other people to a certain extent and if he was put in a special school he would but you know bob and fucking barb didn't want to do that you know they didn't want to deal with the stigma as son you know in, in a mental school you know and well we got chris in the end of all their stupidity acquaintances such as himself Chris isn't going to get back into this this pool of society in my mind if I don't know where Daniel is. I don't, I haven't heard nothing about him since he made that crazy video where he was talking about killing everybody. And then the, the end of the other one, he was like, help me, Bob. Fuck you, Bob. Someone help me. It was kind of sad almost. I mean, but he was raging, like really pissed off. And his nose was running. He kept licking his nose. It's gross. If we're all going to just document her like she's a wild animal. That would actually be a funny video is someone doing a like a, a nature doc about Chris, but you're just you're just making fun of the dude who's doing the doc. And then by the end, you see him in his underwear at his computer. I'd watch that. He also mentioned that former guard dog, Kiwi Farms member, the captain, introduced himself to Brian and helped him and Christine make amends after a brief falling out. You're not a hero for just being an asshole for the sake of being an asshole it's not a good thing in my mind and uh just to reiterate if you're gonna hey kelly how you doing tonight mock somebody at least have the class to do it in a comic shortly after the video was shared on the farms it was deleted also on this day it appeared that brian's twitter account was hacked as he confessed that Christian focused YouTuber Gibby was in fact the captain and was the person that had sent the Nintendo Switch console to Chris as a present. The hacker as Brian then confided that he ate out of Christine's taint and sucked her penis before having his home address posted on the social media site. On March 9th, Chris wrote while playing the mobile game Pokemon Go, which made use of players' real-world locations. She determined that her house, which she also claimed was Sonichu headquarters, was a compass, based on the fact that she was facing south as she looked at one corner of the house. You Me guys remember what happened bad with uh, Pokemon Go, right? They used to tell you when there are other trainers in the area, and uh, the places that had registered sex offenders had the most trainers. Yeah, not good. So, you know, the predators were able to try and find kids, you know, through Pokemon Go. 
meaning all other corners would point at the other three respective directions. The next day, Chris made a so-called deity-level wish and request to make the location of her house a Pokestop in Pokemon Go, a geographical location where players could claim Pokemon and other special items. On March 11th, Christine claimed on Twitter that her alleged husband, Magichan, had informed her that their alleged husband, the Pokemon Mewtwo, had come down with a bad head virus, and so she wished for her followers for prayers in his recovery. When confronted by a Twitter user who told her that Mewtwo was not real and that the dimensional merge would not take place, Chris wrote back, warning them that they would be blocked if they were to write once more denouncing her beliefs as hallucination, delusion, and illusion. Later that day, she boasted about her achievements in the mobile game Tetris after playing it over the weekend. On March 12th, Christine unveiled her new custom-painted yellow-slash-blue Adidas brand shoes, and so put up her old, identical shoes with autographed insoles for sale on the eBay auction site for $200. When an individual complained about the expensiveness of the item, Chris stated that they were celebrity shoes, comparable to ones that may have been worn by noted basketball player Michael Jordan. Within a day, the shoes were bought by her avid follower, Jacob Sockness, who thought that they were the sacred shoes of Christine the Goddess, filled with her energy, which she was looking forward to wearing for the My Little Pony convention, BabsCon. You know, it was funny, right before this popped up, I was thinking to myself, I'm like, I bet you Sockness buy these. Yep, and he did. Later on, YouTuber and artist Fallen Shadow shared her artistic rendering of Chris Chan reimagined as a so-called Amin Waifu. Chris then declared that someone should print the picture onto a dakimakura, or large body pillow. Also on that day, she complained about the plot of the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie concerning the main character Sonic being a being from space. At around that time, Christine was filmed by a clerk working at the game retailer GameStop while she looked for a Pokemon accessory that could be used with the game Pokemon Go. The clerk later revealed that Chris was permitted to enter the establishment and that the employees were instructed to deal with her in a neutral manner. Ah. Hey dude. Hi, how you doing? Doing okay. I am in the market for a brand new Pokeball Plus. A brand new Pokeball Plus? Uh, let me see if you have Yes, we do. And I need a pre-owned, non-closing 2DS. Pre-owned, non-closing 2DS. Let's see if we have any of those. I'm not sure we do. Wham. Wham, wham. This Pokeball bus contains wham. Yeah, it looks like the only DS we have in stock are the folding ones. Okay. I was hoping to say it somewhere, but that's okay. I'll just take the Pokeball Plus for now. Fifty-two. So something is going to happen. I'm going to paint it into a special custom Pokeball I designed called an S chew ball. An S chew ball. Yeah, yeah, I love how Chris's creations are always so original and unique. You know that he never really copies other things and just adds a fucking S to it or nothing, right? Hang on a second. Designed after the classic and most popular Sonic OC ever, Sonic Chew. Yeah. Especially used for capturing electric types. Okie dokie. So, yeah, check me out on the internet. I've been famous for a long time. All right, well, that's cool. Because guess who created that OC? Yo. <laughs> Did you want a bag for this? Yeah. Uh, no. Okie dokie. There you go. Thank you. Have a good day. You too. On March 14th, Christine pleaded for people to nominate her house as a Pokestop in the game Pokemon Go so that users could receive perks and bonuses at her residence. She also What's sad, too, is a lot of smart people, they aren't able to... Uh, their intelligence makes it to where they can talk themselves into what they're doing that is wrong is not as bad as it is. I've noticed, you know, some smart people, some smart people are like that. I'm not one of them, but you know, there are some smart people. Yeah. So revealed that she had registered her home address as a business on Google, naming it Sonichu Headquarters, and set the business official website as the Quickie, though only temporarily until she found a more appropriate site. This resulted in many people posting fake reviews on the so-called business, usually featuring references to Chris's past. The business listing was then... Yep. 
the way I see it is I don't really believe in any religion, but if Jesus is real, you know, I always hold out that possibility, you know, if he's real. So I don't think he'd be pissed at me. You know what I mean? I, th I think, you know, you'll be seeing shit with your own eyes if that's real, you know, probably pretty soon. Or you never know. They got CRISPR gene therapy where people are going to live forever pretty much. So it might be hundreds of years from now. Because one of the things you got to remember about Revelation is everybody in the world has to deserve it before it will happen. You know, because they're like intestines explodes and the birds eat them and all this bullshit. You know, you know what I'm talking about. On periodically taken down and then put back up again. On the 15th, Chris went back to Twitter to announce that her apparent husband, Mewtwo, was recovering from his illness. On March 16th, she complained once more about the Sonic movie, this time voicing her distaste for the redesign of the character, which was shared by the vast majority of the knowing public, and shared a fan redesign of Sonic in the more traditional form. Also on that day, Jacob Sockness received his purchase of Christine's old shoes, complete with certificate of authenticity. He claimed that the shoes contained cat and dog DNA, and he searched them for one of Christine's hairs so he could implant it into an amulet of serious power to manifest one's dreams. He then made a YouTube video opening the box and assessing its contents. Here it goes. First seal. Seal is cracked. Let's see if it smells anything. No. It smells like bubble gum, actually. Here it goes. That is so weird. I don't know why they smell like bubble gum. There's no foot odor at all on these things. They've seen a little bit of repair. There's uh, duct tape inside of these. This side has... Ooh, there's hair in there. Oh my god, what a sick guy Sockness is. You grow Sockness. You're a nasty motherfucker. Ooh, she did leave some hair sample, so send that to the cloning lab. Jesus, cloning lab, huh? Uh, can you imagine more than one, Chris? So this is what she's been walking in for a year. Not bad. It'll be in front of the merge. <laughs> All her characters and and you can see the shoes on her feet in one of these videos. Let me get this off of here. I actually have a photo that has her shoes on and she's wearing them and you can see the shoes are right there and now they're right here in my house in my temple the sacred temple on march 17th after one of her followers tweeted at her about sonichu's birthday chris tweeted that she almost forgot that the date marked 19 years since she created sonichu posting a photo of her recently painted Pokeball Plus. I love how everything Chris makes is like B-grade. Like, none of this shit is smooth, you know, tight lines. It's all kind of lopsided and shit like that. Fucking Chris, man. Do it. If you're going to do something, do it right. Three works of fan art depicting Sonichu and Rose Chu. When asked if she would credit the original artists, she replied that she would love to, but the tweet was done on impulse, and she had difficulties in remembering names. The next day, after being prompted by a comment from a follower, Christine claimed to have been inspired to elaborate further on the gender differences of different types of sonichus. In addition to her tweet thread describing their biological features, she drew diagrams, first depicting a male sonichu and a female rosechu, and then depicting a rare female sonichu and male rosechu. When a commenter noted that Sonic the Hedgehog did not canonically possess toes, in contrast to her betoed Sonichu depictions, Chris clarified that the Sonic creators got that detail wrong and that Sonic did in fact have ties. On March 20th, during a string of random access humor tweets, Chris posted an audio file of what she dubbed a melodic burp. <laughs> On March 22nd, Christine met up with YouTuber Kopitz. Chris is a classy, delicate flower. With whom she had met and filmed a video before, along with a couple of his friends. Together, they filmed a video in which they went to search for ghosts within the abandoned mental hospital, DeJarnet Sanitarium in Staunton, Virginia, which was founded by Joseph DeJarnet. 
a staunch advocate of forced sterilization of the mentally ill and others he deemed defective. What's up, guys? We're here at the DeJarnet Sanatorium. Uh, I'm here with Christine Weston Chandler. Yo. Yo. AKA Chris Chan. And we're going to be exploring the. Oh, if that guy that founded this place had his way, they definitely would have took Chris's balls. This place, searching for ghosts. Ruh-roh. It's going to be. You think you can squeeze through here, Christine? I think I can manage. All right. <laughs> nice job. So hey. there's a bunch of different levels to this building. Why is she dead, people? I think the ghosts are coming after me. <laughs> I got a quartz, a lightning quartz on my wrist. It might take a, more than one try, but I'm able to do it on the first try oftentimes. But I'm going to make it right in here. Fingerless gloves. What is with law cows and fingerless gloves like Cyrax? Huh? Should I stand back? Right. <laughs> Sometimes it makes more one. There it is. Oh, nice, nice. It's where uh, Joseph DeJarnet um, did his work. He's uh, known for being a pretty famous eugenics doctor, and he's known to still roam the halls as a ghost, obviously. Oh, this Closed down of- way long ago. His name was Joseph DeJarnet. Joseph. You know, um, eugenics sounds, you know, kind of mean, but at the same time, if they'd have started doing that shit in the 1800s when they first started talking about it, none of us would have all the fucked up health problems we have by now. Joe, what do you know? Uh, I've met ghosts, so yes. Hello? Hello? We're friendly. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. I don't think we're ghosts. <laughs> don't worry, guys. If anything, Magic Chance Sachu has us protected. Ooh. <laughs> don't worry, we mean you no harm, spirits. As long as we don't bother them, they won't bother us. Uh, oh, that's my mother. Hey, yo. Bye bye. No, it's okay. Definitely that was six. just my mother calling me. Y'all's mothers were concerned about yours as well. Y'all, when you were. I mean, no offense. Thank you. Had some fun hunting Here. around the spooky trails. Humping up. No, I mean like the American ones that just talked about, you know, gene lines, you know, that have problems, you know, to be eliminated. You know, you know what I mean? Like, if your if your family has, they didn't have the technology for it either, though. They couldn't actually do genes. Like, they couldn't find out what genes gave you bad knees, you know, to where you could. You know, breathe that out of the line, you know, it through recessive in, in Dama. You know what I mean? Around the spooky trails. Mm-hmm. I wonder who those people are. Yeah, I don't know. They might, we might have scared them off because they didn't say anything to us. Yeah, I thought we were ghosts. That's the difference between knowing and not knowing. Hi, Mom. Checking in. I don't know if you want to uh, wait till after I got home to fix dinner or whatever. We'll see you later. Love you. When do you think the dimension merger is happening? It's very soon, within, this, within the coming days. If you wanted to ask to access the what's it called C C one nine seven C one nine seven. If you wanted to access it right now, could we do it? Oh yeah. Would you like to try it? I don't know if anybody's ever seen you do it before. Okay, well, hang on, I'll. Christine, can you still hear us? Yes, I hear you. Are you in are you in C one nine seven? Yep. Do you think I could have a conversation with one of them through you? Like you can tell me what they're saying and you can tell them what I'm saying? Well Sabrina is telling me. Say hi to hi, to hi Sabrina. To tell Sabrina I said hi. Well she hears you through me, so it's like a conduit. Oh, okay. Could I speak to uh maybe like Lisa Simpson or somebody? Okay, well I don't have to move my cell all the way over to Springfield. Well, I'm talking with Homer right now. She's not she's not home right now. Can I speak to Marge? No, she's covered it. Hi, Marge. She doesn't want her speech put on the internet. Oh, okay. But she will say <laughs> Chris is called out on his bullshit and he can't do any of the things he said he could. I mean, Chris was bald out, called out on Chris's bullshit and Chris can't do anything about it. Hey, for everyone to remain on their best behavior and to be kind to each other. She will not stand for crass and rudeness. Oh, of course. Yes, wise words, March. Thank you. Ugh. I'm a little tired. I gotta come back here. Well, I have to come back. I got my brain got worn out.
on March 23rd. Kopitz uploaded the video on YouTube, and Chris shared it on Twitter. In addition, she shared a drawing she had made earlier in March commemorating those with impairments, like autism. I felt inspired to draw this after hearing and reading the history of hashtag Dejarnet and his sanitarium. Joseph's ideals and methods offended me. Everyone has the right to reproduce. No one should be forced to not, regardless of mental status and health. And I remembered that, including myself, we all each have a soul and how we each are able to communicate in this world. And the worse the mental handicap, the more difficult a blockage that individual has to get their thoughts out. Every soul is intelligent with their lives worth of wisdom and education. And with that, I'm more than proud to tell you all, you all, everyone has a soul of hope. Guest stars in this piece, Mitch Sonachu, formerly Aspertu, and at Lucky the Gator. The youngsters were inspired from a Google image search for the faces, as detailed as possible. They have been drawn and colored variably and different from the various source photos. Thank you. On March 30th, Chris returned to the sanitarium by herself and filmed a video for YouTube. Hello everybody, this is Christine Chandler coming to you live from within the first floor area of the Desjarnet Sanitarium where I come here on my own volition and goodwill on a mission of peace and goodwill. I'm here because recently I've made a drawing inspired by what happened here in Desjardins and the innocent children and adults who were robbed of their rights and they suffered from the mental scars and all that. Anyway, I am leaving for them this photocopy of the lovely drawing and I wrote a lovely message on the back so that hopefully those who find it in the future and I do pray that these halls this building will one day become renovated restored this would become a good positive mental health facility or otherwise a general or children's hospital that is my hope and wish for this sanitarium and also for peace and goodwill and the freedom for all the lost and trapped souls in here to feel free to leave and move on. I'll leave this in humble. I bet you if you thought you were Jesus in the Middle Ages, your time at the uh, mental health place was probably not fun. Goodwill for all of you. Please enjoy. Not only good karma points for me, but just leaving an awesome memento. Thank you all, and y'all have a good enough. No, I think a square shovel would be satisfying the most. Lovely day. You know, the back end of it. About four hours after Chris uploaded the video, QB Farms user Vicodin traveled to the DeJarnet Sanitarium and retrieved the picture. He later posted the backside of the image with a handwritten message in a YouTube video, which mostly reiterated her wishes for the souls to find their way out of the sanitarium and hopes for the building to be re-established as a kind mental hospital. Possibly a short time after, as recounted by his girlfriend at the time, Vicodin invited Christine for lunch and agreed to pay for her. When he and his then-girlfriend picked Chris up, the Chandler's beagles bellowed loudly. While in the car, Chris continuously loudly sang along with the songs playing on the radio and announced that the dimensional merge would take Chris is such a piece of shit. You see how fat those dogs are? You know, at the very least, don't feed them as much, you know, but take them for walks. And you got, that's why I don't like dogs. When you have a dog, you got to fucking walk that fucker for at least an hour every single day or else it's cruel to the dog. Take place soon and that she could speak with the dead. When they arrived at the restaurant, Chris took out a customized duct tape phone case that held two phones, which could enable her to play the game Pokemon Go on two devices simultaneously. She spoke very loudly about all topics, and at one point, convinced Vicodin's girlfriend to put on her Sonichu medallion, asking if she could quote-unquote feel the power. On the final day of March, 
Chris revealed that the combined dimension of 1218 and C197 would be called 1C-211987. On April 2nd, one of her supporters on Patreon, who had been her patron for three months, notified on her page that they had yet to receive any copies of her Sonichu comics that they were supposed to get in return for their patronage. They wrote they would withdraw their backing if Chris did not respond. On that same day, Chris was sued for unpaid debt by Portfolio Recovery Associates, and her next court hearing was set on May 15th. On April 3rd, Christine uploaded a curious YouTube this, video. Yeah, he's got a big kitty body count, don't he? Yeah. Well, maybe uh, when Anubis sees his soul, they'll be like, Ah, oh, damn, Chris, looks like your heart's heavier than a feather. You're going to be non-existent now. You're going to get eaten by a... Oh, what the fuck is his name? The pri It's a primordial something or other, like a crocodile. Video ...in which she films a masked man reading from a script. The player's identity was never determined. Hello, everyone. Far and near. I have something you want to hear. So please use your ears before I disappear. Let's make something clear before we start. I have a good purple heart that won't fall apart. We are all about to take part in a new event segment, which will indent what you call a scent. My intent is to present the news, which will eliminate the torment of discontent. Just keep reading. that supplement to a lesser extent. Christine has been hell-bent on being a parent. So she made a pleasant investment in, investment and got my mother pregnant. I am a fluorescent adolescent, a direct descendant, and not the only attendant. There is one other, Crystal, and I am her brother. There is much you don't know unless I show, but that is a no-go. Right now I am here solo, but soon I will have my shadow, a lovely combo. There will be no tiptoe around the tempo. I must let go of my manifesto and go back to the golden, below Bambalonian weeping willow, below the Jim Crow plateau. I hope I have walked this difficult type rope well under your light microscope. Nonetheless, God bless. Thanks for working with me in this process. More or less, it's still a work in progress. I hope to bring happiness for all parties. And please don't sniff those gnarly Sharpies. On April 4th, Chris unveiled her six new Pokeball accessories that could be used with Pokemon Go, which she painted to appear like s balls. She defended her purchases, stating that apart from one she bought new, the others were second-hand, and purchased at a discount of up to $15. Some Kiwi Farms users calculated that her Pokeballs cost a minimum total of $225. During this time, Christine played Pokemon Go constantly, updating her Twitter with frequent updates about her playing habits and achievements, allegedly walking significant amounts to catch Pokemon around her locale. On April 5th, she shared a short trailer for a documentary film titled Chris Chan vs. The Internet, which featured new footage in the form of in-person interviews from Chris and her mother, Barbara. At first, he couldn't talk. So he was... Uh trained with a speech therapist. His behavior was not normal. I wasn't aware of uh, all that was going on at first. The film was created by a film studies graduate who at first learned about Chris from the Chris Chan A Comprehensive History YouTube series by Gino Samuel and had taken time off work to spend about a week with Christine, filming her throughout the day. The trailer also notably hinted that the documentary film would feature Chris's former friend, Megan Schroeder. Now he's, he seems like a totally different person to me. The filmmaker did not have much knowledge about Christine's followers and trolls, and did not use social media. So he asked his friend to set up a fundraising campaign for it on the site Kickstarter, with a goal of $20,000 and the hopes of having it shown in film festivals. When the Kickstarter was shared on QB Farms, 
The project was near unanimously condemned for the brevity and vagueness of the fundraiser's description, high goal, and poor tier choices, and was quickly labeled as a scam, reasoning that there were other documentaries available for free on YouTube. The friend, who was user CMCW on Kiwi Farms, elaborate now that is someone i wouldn't mind interviewing is uh, someone like megan you know what i mean that would be cool to talk to someone like that it's that the description and funding tiers were copied from other kickstarter pages and that funds would be used to pay for interviews with youtubers who had made christian documentaries such as gino samuel and sachimo and to retroactively pay for travel expenses during filming CMCW went on to try address many questions from forum users, though could not answer adequately, which resulted in more ridiculing. After reviewing negative feedback on the farms and poor communication with interested parties on the social media site Reddit, the Kickstarter was cancelled after one day, and upon witnessing the backlash, Megan asked to be removed from the final film. The document Tom Hanks is supposed to have a secret uh, Nazi paraphernalia room in his in his mansion. Supposedly, that's what they say. Entry was later completely abandoned by the filmmaker. I'm not evil or nothing like that, but I find like all those drawings of like satanic imagery from the Middle Ages. You know where they're like in hell and they're eating them and shit like that. I think that shit's really cool personally. Who that's one of the weird things that I like. <laughs> on to endure online bullying and trolling and was under so much stress and paranoia that he eventually felt compelled to physically destroy the hard drive containing the footage with a hammer. On April 5th, Christie notified her followers that she meant it. Man, I remember in the 90s when the damn History Channel wasn't the Alien Channel, it was the fucking Nazi Channel. World War II shit every single fucking day no, nothing on it to watch nothing else it's, it's, it was like constant nazis <laughs> managed to have i called it the nazi channel for years amethyst high school ring successfully repaired by herf jones the makers of the ring after cracking it by striking it with another stone in an attempt to make it spark the next day she drove 150 miles to visit a trusted online friend and fan along with her husband the friend later wrote she got to wear chris's sonatry i know in the the learning channel used to have like tummy tuck surgeries and surgeries and shit like that on there man the learning now the learning channel is the honey boo boo network you know medallion the three spent the weekend together and chris and her friend exchanged artwork chris drew for her sonatry hanging a spoon off his nose and her friend offered chris her drawing of chris chan sonatry and magic chan embracing on the way back, Christine lost her wallet, and she had her friend and husband prepare for her a temporary driver's license. On April 13th, Chris watched the video that major YouTuber PewDiePie made about her some years prior. She felt that he accentuated her negatives and was triggered by being reminded of the trolling sagas and was called not amongst the greatest of people. She felt offended, but did not think he deserved to lose his channel over the video. You know what show that I hated at first, but loved after a while? Absolutely fabulous on Comedy Central. That show is fucking cool. Yeah. It came on before or after something is why I watched it, I think. I can't remember. On April 15th, Christine notified her Twitter followers that her missing wallet had been found safely. So she drove to retrieve it, claiming to have been accompanied by her husband, Magichan, and Inuyasha the Pokemon Blaziken, which she had caught in the game Pokemon Go, which she believed was the same Pokemon that she had possessed in the game Pokemon Ruby in the early 2000s, that she named after the protagonist of a Japanese manga series of the same name. She soon after posted a photo taken in-game, which showed the Blaziken seemingly defending Rutgersville, Virginia, in front of the sign denoting its entry. Also on that day, a user of the site Reddit posted a photo of Chris walking. Blaziken. Uh, for some reason, that may, I want to put a sombrero on him. You know, I don't know. <laughs> through the department store Target, who was claimed to have been muttering loudly to herself. The next day, she elaborated on what she was doing there and commented her opinions on the recent burning of part of the French cathedral, Notre Dame. Taking a break at the nearby at Target, having some pasta and at Mountain Dew in its cafe, 
and luring Pokemon at its Pokestop with Magichan, Grizel, and my Blaziken. I'm an eighth Mexican from Texas Mexicans. So that was they my my family was probably there fucking whenever uh Spain ruled it and shit was probably in Texas. Ken Inuyasha at the table. I saw and read the first notification from the at NBC News app on my phone stating that Notre Dame was set ablaze. You, you want to know what's fucked up about the Texas Revolution? The Texas Revolution was to take over Texas so that they could have slaves. Slavery was illegal. The Mexicans didn't allow it yet. But the, the Texans really, really, really wanted slavery. Yeah, I, 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 I went to school for a little while in Texas, so uh, I, I learned a lot of their history. They don't they don't polish it or nothing. You know, they just present it They're like, yeah, that happened. You know, my initial thoughts were, oh, the humanity. Krizel and Inuyasha were both shocked with me, and Magichan, a bit career fallen at the event, had foreseen its happening long before. He assured me that many people would be safe and that the cathedral would be quickly restored. I even saw a retweet of the footage of its spire falling and the smoke puffing out from the blaze. I saw a legendary bird Pokemon flying there and its head shape forming in the smoke shown in that video clip. Accident or not, this blaze was fated to happen to the cathedral. Oh yeah, people in Texas are nice as hell. You're you're almost expected to wave and wave at everybody that you pass when you're walking, or else you're considered an asshole. Cathedral, <laughs> the opposite of lots of other places. If y'all can take anything from my tweets here, is the assurance from Magichan Sonachu and I that Notre Dame would be quickly restored, and it will be a fateful and magical sight to behold especially in how quickly it happens and my thoughts and prayers go out to every early 90s everyone who was affected by the tragedy be safe and well. i went to fiesta texas before it became six flags fiesta texas and it had all kinds of cool 1950s music and little little places to buy food and shit like that and my uncle he was so good at uh because he took jiu-jitsu and shit he had really good you know the feel and control and all that there's a game where you shot, uh, you hit a, a mallet and jump balls into pans. And my uncle was so good at that kind of shit, he could just go up there and win whatever they wanted. And then after a while, they banned him from the game. They're like, you're not allowed to play this game. I'm sorry, but sir, you're not allowed to play this game anymore. Well, and have a good day. On April 20th, it appeared that Google finally acknowledged Chris's application to make her home the official Sonichu headquarters labeled as a business. She also asked for advanced players of Pokemon Go to vote for her residents to become a Pokestop in-game, for they had the ability to do so. She claimed she would rearrange the front garden and add seating amenities if her house became a Pokestop or a Pokemon gym. To make an official announcement, she made a YouTube video outside her home. Hello everybody, this is Christine Weston Chandler Sonichu, coming in late to you live from my faithful and loving home in Ruckersville, Virginia, which has now been correctively and recognized. Of My dumbass grandpa at one point traded his double barrel shotgun for fucking two, uh, two modern ones. Shit, not a cat damn double barrel. It's a lot cooler than the modern ones. Who cares if it holds more? If you lo if you unload a fucking double barrel in someone, they're not getting up. Officially by Google, this is officially Sonichu headquarters. This is not only my home for me as the creator and author of the books and artworks and other featurettes featuring Sonichu and Rose Shoot, the electric hedgehog Pokemon, and the Evolution families and all the other special Sonichu and Rose Shoes aside from that. But also, this is a loving, kept, fairly well kept home. At least my father, the late Mr. Robert Franklin Chandler Jr., has been keep had kept it up with. Oh yeah, where I live, there's all kinds of people that will just give me guns if anything bad ever happened. They'll just they, they've all they've even said that to me many times. Lots of people that I know, like at least nine or ten people, ten yeah, ten people have been like, if shit ever hits the fan, you know, you're in, you're welcome to come here and grab a gun anytime you want. So I honestly, that's why I don't own guns. I don't really need them, you know. Well. We had a day lily garn, but yeah, it's a mess. I mean, I'm not going to show the mess, but obviously what was day lilies is now a bunch of forest during the summertime. 
that I would illy, I would not advise going through whatsoever. Believe it or not, I am a CPU, a console patron unit, a goddess of the Commodore consoles. At this, at this house, this home. My aunt and uncle that were rich lived in Scottsdale for a while. And, and uh, what do you call it? Um, for some reason, I went there and visited, and it was really fun. But they were listening to the Macarena and stuff like that. And then I mentioned to them a couple of years ago, and they're like, oh, we weren't listening to the Macarena. Yes, and the fuck you was. Matt, even messing y'all becomes a an official Pokestop or even better, a Pokemon gym. I'll definitely set up benches for everyone's comfort so they can enjoy the Pokestop and gym challenges and the raid bat and the raid. One of my dumbass uh, cousins, he grabbed one of those exploding cactuses and it blew up in his hand and stuck, shoved the needles in him. Eights and all that good stuff. Now, one more thing I will mention for this introductory video for this. I know, right? You've got 10-year-old kids and shit like that. There's nothing wrong. Nothing, you know, you're not too cool to have done that, right? Thing. The haters. I'm follow, I've been followed for years by internet trolls and cyber bullies. And definitely worse among them, the haters. They're going to leave a whole bunch of negative comments and low ratings. So I just, you know, in the, in the final decision making, just ignore all hateful comments. People who make the Pokemon Go app and people at Google. Because I do, I do as well as I can with my art and books and everything. I'm just... One individual with superpowers still in development with only my... Well, in the end of the world, you want cows because chickens carry tuberculosis. And if it's the end of the world, there's not going to be all kinds of nice fucking hospitals everywhere. You know what I mean? Because society could collapse. You know, it could. You know, uh, one day something bad happens or, you know, anything. They, ta they make it to where everything's too expensive to buy and the economy collapses because of their fucking greed. You know? <laughs> loves nearby magic chance slot you my blaze again they will be fully visible soon after the, the bench yeah hogs are garbage disposals and they're you know they're they'll eat anything you know and fucking they're, they're, they're efficient at turning food into meat yeah pigs are really good yeah they are chickens are good but damn you don't want to get tuberculosis I don't know. I bet if you kept their shit clean, you know, and clean the straw out like once or twice a week, you probably wouldn't get tuberculosis from them. Should merge. Um, this is Christine Weston Chandler Sanchu, the CPU Blue Heart of the Mayan Nations of Quickville and Kama. Yeah, everybody have be safe and have a good. Safe I've never had goat, but I've known Middle Eastern people that said that goat was good, and I've known other people that have had goat and say it's good. They said it was a little stringy, but other than that, it's really good. They said it's tasty. I think that'd be cool to try. Good day. Thank you. On April 22nd, Chris wrote a 16-tweet thread explaining the reasoning behind... You won't get prions from a human either if you eat, like, biceps and thighs and shit like that. It's whenever you eat internal organs. If you're a cannibal, I don't know. It's gross that I even know that, you know, because the dark sides of the internet... You see all kinds of weird YouTube videos, but yeah, if you just eat like biceps and muscles, you know, and no brain and no heart or organs or, any, or anything like that, you won't get the prions. I would never eat anybody though, dude. I'd find rats or something first, you know. <laughs> Behind the Pokemon type classification of her character, Blake Sonichu. The next day, her 2018 Fashion Square Mall trespassing charge was dismissed after she successfully completed a satisfactory number of therapeutic sessions. Later that day, she posted a video on Twitter asking for gas money. Hey everybody, got a little situation here. Less than an eighth full of gas in our one tangible vehicle here. And in pie money only, as well as a little bit of petty cash. Anyway, I need like twenty dollars for gas, please. Please help me out. Really need it so we can use this van before our money so we can use this van some more before our money comes in by next week. 
It's like, and it's Wednesday or Thursday. Yeah. Thank you. Twitty. I think those Chinese assholes put those fucking disgusting snake fish in our water. I'm pretty damn sure they did. And I've heard rumors that it's Al Qaeda and shit and ISIS and stuff that starts all these forest fires here. Shit, I'd believe it. But, you know, in places like that, we have controlled burns a lot of places. And like California, they let the fucking uh, pine needles, you know, get five feet di- thick because there's some special fucking uh, lizard that lives there that doesn't live anywhere else or some shit like that. You know, <laughs> a user, Nintendo Merd, notified her that they would donate if she wished them a happy birthday, promising to be more generous if Chris made a video. Shortly after, Chris made a video for Twitter wishing them a happy birthday. Hello, Nintendo Merd. It's a happy, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, have an awesome one, yay! When Bob Newland pulled a weird-looking creature from a Miami backwater in 2000, he took it to Florida's exotic fish lab to find out what it was. When I got it there, I just dropped it right on the floor. I said, okay, Paul, what is this? And he just looked at me and said, oh, well, I don't know. And then he got a big book and they looked in the book and eventually Paul came over and he said, this is what it is. It's a snakehead. After that, he wanted to know exactly where I caught it. And I said, I caught it on a golf course in Tamarack. And then he said, no, I need to know what hole you found it on. Government scientist Paul Shafland had to act fast. What we had hoped was that it would only be in one pond. And if they are in one pond, we could go in and eradicate. But when his team checked the surrounding canals, it was bad news. Snakehead 583. The invaders were already on the move. South Florida is a maze of interconnected canals. We couldn't have created a more ideal habitat for snakeheads. Shafland is up against the bullseye snakehead. But this is just one member of a much larger gang. Snakeheads are in fact a group of almost 30 different species that range in size from a small flick knife to a four-foot torpedo. They're ambush predators with long camouflage bodies, ripping teeth, and a reputation for extreme aggression. Their global empire already stretches from tropical Africa to the Far East, including Russia, and they seem to be spreading. Soon after Newland's discovery, they eat these in Asia. Is what they do, and one of the one of the things about Asia is Japan will pay will pay you like fifty dollars a pound for disgusting eels, and the eels that they buy, I've loaded them into bags and shit before, and you can't touch them because they're like the water is like thirty eight degrees, and if you touch them, they emit this disgusting white slime, and then if that one gets in there, the other ones, the white slime will suffocate them on the way to Japan. I don't see how they could eat something like that. What a, it is what it is. Every, everybody eats something, right? The user then allegedly donated to Chris. 20- and it's real sticky and fucked up. It's hard to get off. It's like Spider-Man goo is what it looks like. Whenever it happened to me, I flicked it at my friend and hit him with it. And I said, I'm Spider-Man. He dolls via Patreon. She then wished make her night fee a happy birthday in a Twitter video. And also a very sweet happy birthday to my friend, MKR, so awesome. She is really awesome. You're awesome, Megan. So happy, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy birthday, happy, happy birthday, happy birthday. Have an awesome day. I can love you. Mm. Chris afterwards addressed a. They tor- were eels. They were 100% eels. They weren't lampreys or hag. They were. They. Were, I can't remember what kind of eel they are. They were silver in color. They're nasty fucking things. Who had sent her a box that was filled with glitter? Hey, everybody, Christine Chandler coming to you live from home. And we just received a lovely little gift box. <laughs> ah, but my psychic powers are deducing and very good because shit, man, fishing and shit. If you go, if you go to the North Sea, you can make ten thousand dollars a month, but it's so cold that like. When you go outside in the morning, I've seen it on YouTube. They have to take uh, a sledgehammer and beat all the ice that came on the night from the ocean water because it's so cold. The ocean water freezes and it sticks to everything. And they got to beat all the ice off before the at the first thing they do in the morning. 
like six inches of ice on everything. <laughs> I actually was able to sense foresight. I, before any, before opening or even cutting the tape that this box is open with, foresaw gummies, gummy candies, shape of penises. Nice. It's okay. I'll enjoy those. But also, I sense. I like cod, man. Out of ocean fish, cod is my shit. Those things are really good. The litter bomb. Litter bomb. Uh, yeah. I opened it all slowly. And no mess. Look, no mess at all. The, all the mess is in this. Inside this one Ziploc bag that I put it all into. <laughs> yeah. You're not fooling me. You're not fooling me. You're not fooling any of us. Have a good day. On April 25th, Chris updated her Sonichu headquarters business listing on Google with two new photos that featured her mother, Barbara. Two days later, Christine took a number of photos in her crappie, walleye, sunfish like perch and catfish. But if you can catch mutant perch like bluegill, they're like two pounds. They're really fucking, I mean, like a pound and a half. They're really fucking good. Backyard that featured Pokemon placed into the scene as seen within her gameplay of Pokemon Go. On April 30th, she reacted to the revelation of actor Jim Carrey's look in the upcoming Sonic the Hedgehog movie. Who would be playing the villain, Dr. Robotnik? They call them dolphins in Florida, and I didn't know that. My dad was talking about it. He kept calling them dolphins. That's not a fucking dolphin. And he got all mad at me at shit. Like, I'm supposed to psychically know that that's what they call them fuckers in Florida. Okay. I've just been offended by the new movie. Ugh. Robotnik. Not to be a hater, but this, simply put, no, at Sonic Movie. No. No, 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 no. Hell fing N. Oh. She then shared a realistic rendering of how Robotnik may look if he were designed to appear more like the character as seen in video games and animations. As the first official trailer for the film was released, the people on the internet at large widely ridiculed. Yeah, we didn't want this. No. <laughs> we didn't want this shit. Killed Sonic's appearance. On May 1st, Chris wrote on Twitter that the 2013 fan-made Sonic movie was superior to the studio-produced film and begged for the film studio Paramount and Sonic creators Sega to fix the perceived errors of the movie. A couple of days later, it was announced that the movie's release would be pushed back in order to change Sonic's in-film appearance due to the overwhelming international negative reaction. Chris then thanked the film's director, Jeff Fowler, for listening to her and fans like her. On May 6th, Portfolio Recovery Associates filed a second lawsuit for unpaid debt against Christine, with the next court date set on June 19th. On the 10th, she notified her followers that she went to see the film Detective Pikachu, recommending others to go see it in theaters. The next day, she revealed that her mother had found an old drawing made by Chris's half-brother, Cole Smithy, when he was a child, and also shared a childhood photo of him, commenting that he had been a handsome boy before he became a closed-off, distant type of movie critic. Chris then wrote a 30-tweet thread concerning the backstory of the Sonichu villain, Relnak Natsu Natsurk. On May 13th, she posted a rainbow-colored throw blanket for sale on eBay for $200. When asked about the high price, she wrote that it was her mother's idea. The blanket was quickly bought by Jacob Sockness. It had been suggested that the money for the purchase was used to prematurely pay for the property tax bill. On the 16th, Chris unveiled the description of a new pony character she allegedly discovered a distant cousin of the My Little Pony character, Applejack, A.J. Farton, whose specialty was farting with the aroma of apple juice. On May 19th, Chris announced that she felt the cosmos, fate, destiny, and all else in their progress around her. 
It was at around this time that private messages between an unknown Twitter user and the enablers Sarah and Steve, who had gifted to Chris a Nintendo Switch and donated at least $100, were leaked on the Kiwi farms. They wrote that they believed Christine was a goddess and that they understood that being in contact with her would bring them nothing but negativity, but they accepted that fact. They were at the time saving up money to move to Virginia, after which time... I'm not really good at construction, but I've done enough of it for people that are real meticulous about doing it the right way and shit like that. And I would be hell if they did shit wrong, man. Like, I know, I, I, like, I know lots of people that do stupid shit like put posts in cement and then fucking uh, hold up shit, uh, like carports, that and shit. No, what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to dig a hole, fill it with cement, make a fucking cement slab there, and then you take a hammer drill and then you drill into it and then you beat these fucking things in there that I can't remember what they're called and then it you bolt it to that and then that's how you're supposed to do it. You're not supposed to put a fucking post in cement. It's not how it's done. They would be making videos and running a new website for Chris, revealing their true identity. They claimed to only want to help her and be her friends encouraging and enabling her to do what she liked since she could not get a conventional job. As debt further mounted, Christine found comfort in the people that followed her, for she could almost surely depend on someone to financially help her when needed. In her world, helping hands were always within reach. With such a life, there was a need to try, to improve, or to change. I like it once or twice a year. Otherwise, I don't like it. What made her this way? What is the attraction? Yeah, in the Walmart deli, they have a, a really good carrot cake, a slice of it, and it's like $3. When I do buy carrot cake, that's what I buy because I don't want a whole lot of it because it's just one of the things that I really like every now and then. You know, I don't like them all the time. What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. On yeah, okay, it's not perfect, but you know, it's close enough, right? <laughs> raisins are good in it too. I like making homemade rice pudding and have some raisins in it. I don't know, I'm weird, I'm old fashioned. <laughs> May 15th, 2019, YouTuber Nick Robinson uploaded a video in which he discusses Pappy Van Poodle, a character from the Nintendo 3DS game Rusty's Real Deal Baseball, about whom next to no information existed and was difficult to encounter. According to a certain commenter, they claimed that Christine was the first person to have discovered Pappy Van Poodle. To confirm who was the first to have found the character... I get chocolate-covered raisinets every now and then. I like raisinets a lot. ...in the game, Nick Robinson uploaded a follow-up video on May 25th, which featured a brief interview with Chris. Um, so I, I'm... That's I'm the only cereal I'll eat, Andy, is fucking, uh frosted flakes and with bananas i hate cereal i think it's vile i don't know i get all my protein and shit from meat and i get all my other shit from vegetables you know i don't really eat a lot of grain i'm not a grain guy i'm making a video about a 3ds game called rusty's real deal baseball did yeah the real are you familiar with that yeah i played it oh awesome it was, yeah free to play but yet pay to play also yeah i, like, I remember playing a bunch of mini games within that and make it a deal with Rusty. Uh, you remember, like there was like a haggling thing where you could negotiate with Rusty. Oh yeah. Did you? Like, <laughs> You're not making me lose my whole profit margin. You make me go below even breaking even. So I somebody told me that you had played the game and that when when you had negotiated with Rusty, did you did you haggle with him? You haggled the money down. 
Yeah, way down. Oh, got it. Um, I'm trying to track down who originally um, f- discovered this character for the first time. And somebody in a YouTube comment said that you had encountered this character or that you didn't negotiate. But I guess that's not true. Yeah, not quite. Sorry. Amazon's the place to get the uh, the Quaker Chewy uh, granola bars. You pay like six forty eight, and you get like thirty six of them or some shit like that. It's a really good deal. It's okay. What are your like main memories of Rusty's Real Deal Baseball? The back and forth between me and a wabbit. Because Rusty was a wabbit. It's right. like saying that. <laughs> wabbit. I'm gonna the wabbit. <laughs> Actually, you know, I, you might be thinking of Nintendo Badge Arcade because that was a rabbit. I think Rusty was actually a dog. Oh, okay. Well, my mistake. It's okay. At around the same time, Chris's debt repayment case with Midland funding was updated to a garnishment case, meaning that if ruled in favor of the debt collectors, it would be required by the court to pay back the debt by forcibly taking funds available to Chris. On May 25th, Chris wrote a 20-tweet thread describing her new technique of falling asleep and lucid dreaming, or becoming aware that she is dreaming while dreaming. She afterwards added that her friend, Maker Nightfee, had apparently discovered the technique before Christine, but unlike Maker, Chris was able to describe it. If the sleep-slash-meditation technique were to be scientifically studied, she hoped it would be named the Maker-Chan meditation-slash-sleep technique. On May 26th, it appeared that white chocolate peanut butter cups are really fucking good. I really like those Reese's ones. At the enablers, Sarah and Steve canceled their plans of moving to Virginia and personally helping Christine in her artistic and business endeavors. Some hints at what occurred could be gleaned from their updated public Twitter profile description. Just a couple of idiots who assumed they could help Christine swindled out of hundreds of dollars and were treated as subhuman, should have listened to warnings given. They soon after changed their profile biography to a crying face emoji. Through private messaging, they elaborated that they fell out with Chris because she failed to acknowledge them for extended- I've had one of those fiber one bars. I don't think they're bad if I remember right. You know, it was really good. You know, those disgusting protein bars that bodybuilders eat? Whenever I took acid, the only time I've ever took acid, my friend gave me one, and man, that thing was, like, delicious. Like, the chef made it, and it was sweet, and it was so good, and I know if I ever tried to eat it not high on acid, it would be the most disgusting shit in the world. ...it periods while she posted extensively on Twitter about the dimensional merge. Thus, Sarah and Steve feared of being shunned for weeks after relocating. After a short while... Sarah and Steve admitted on Twitter that they were giving Chris a second chance, hoping she would reply to their messages more quickly. On that same day, a user on the social media site Reddit posted in the devoted Chris Chan discussion group, or subreddit, that he drove through Rutgersville, Virginia and made a deal. The Slim Fast Meal Replacement Bars are actually pretty good. Well, any one of them, the, the chocolate chip one was my favorite, but... All those fucking slim, fast meal replacement bars are pretty damn good. Or to quickly visit Christine, posting a selfie he took with her. He noted she shook his hand for an extended period of time and was wet, possibly after having gotten out of the shower. On May 31st, Christine reflected on finding out that the Dean of Student Services for Piedmont, Virginia Community College, Mary Lee Walsh, with whom she had a noted history of conflict, had retired two weeks prior. I wish to offer kind words of her and the work she did there, regardless of what had happened between her and I in many years ago. She had her occupation. She performed to the best of her ability and judgment over the years. I do not recall much about her, and I have personally apologized to her for the mishaps and what had happened to her self-counterpart in Dimension C-197. I never knew her beyond acquaintance and professional boundaries and distance. I have never heard of her direct thoughts on the portrayal of her character, nor on the fame and fandom she had acquired from my own hand, psychic links, and so forth. My one grievance with her being of her uncharismatic and anger, induced attitude and behavior when it comes to dealing or communicating with those who are only trying to find their own way in life. 
in my case, I submit the constructive criticism. That I like putting butter in refried beans. I like putting some butter in there. That's how I do it when I make them. But I was unable to speak to her way back then would be the calm, level-headed, direct statement with no intent of personal space and personal property destruction nor malcontent. Mary Lee Walsh should have said to me upon the first encounter, this public advert is most inappropriate. It portrays you as a sexual solicitor. That is not a way to make conversation with others. Please put this advert away and never pull it out again. If you need help in socializing and talking with others, I can recommend some social skill courses and support groups for the very shy. Is that clear to you? We probably could have avoided the tons of awkwardness and emotions looming over our shoulders, especially hers, had she been simply direct and civil like that back in 2003 with me. Regardless, what happened to and with her has long passed. Move forward and onward, and I humbly and sincerely wish Mary Lee Walsh, here in Dimension 1218, only the most comfortable and blessed years in her retired life until her time of passing. She had suffered enough, and I leave her to live on in peace of mind and forgiveness. I would grow weed, tobacco, and herbs and shit, and like garlic and stuff like that. Because you can trade that shit for lots more food than you could if you grew food on your land. You know what I mean? This. Have a nice life, Mary Lee Walsh. Lightning, blue heart, lightning emojis. Sincerely, this Christine Weston Chandler Sonichu. Is that Pete? Is that how you want to say that? Is Pete? Okay. D U M B question. Has Mary Lee Walsh here ever made any personal recorded statement about her thoughts and feelings about me and all of this since after I delivered the apology drawing to her and then received a freaking trespassing notice? Simple things like you don't need all kinds of phosphorus and chemicals, cow bones have phosphorus in it. And when you put bone meal in the dirt, it's good for 20 years, you know, and it's like, it's like zero eight zero, you know, so it's a pretty good source of fucking phosphorus. Nitrogen can be made out of grass clippings. And then your potash is, um, uh, well, uh, alfalfa meal has, there, there's all kind, kinds of organic shit to do everything with because you won't have chemicals if the entire world collapses. This from her in 2009. Now that this can of worms has been opened yet again by someone who texted me earlier asking me what my thoughts about her retirement were, and I would be remised and dogged if I had not tweeted the set just a while ago. I feel needs to know what she had thought of it all. Tall as knacht, people. Had to add this back onto my pile of stresses, didn't y'all? Also, please never ever remind me of Michael John Snyder or even inform me at all rather or not he had died. I had long moved forward from that jerk way in the past and no need to do that to me either. To me, that jerk has been dead since I found the game and hobby place has been long gone. You know what's really weird? Most of the good cigarettes like Camels and Marlboros and shit like that, the tobacco is hydroponic. And not because uh, because uh, they don't grow their own tobacco. They buy it in auctions. And, you know, always the best quality tobacco just also happens to be hydroponic. It was funny. And whenever I seen it, the it showed the inside of the tobacco growing place. And, you know, there are a bunch of Mexican dudes in there. I was like, I was like, <laughs> I was like, shit, that's probably a pretty easy ass, you know, job as agriculture goes. You know what I mean? They were on floating rafts. Uh, of styrofoam with their roots dangling into the water deep water culture that's a good way to do it out of business and replaces by a chocolate store leave that be with me please kristen posted an animated gif of meditative deep breathing to possibly calm herself down on june 6th in rep yep and one thing you've always got to have in the end of your end of the world kit is poppy seeds because guess what if you have opium, you know, for like pain relief and shit in the end of the world when you can't get drugs and stuff, man, you got some cash there. I mean, if I grew it, I would not, uh, I wouldn't give it to people like addicts and shit. You know, I'd sell it to the doctor, you know, <laughs> apply to a challenge from the official Pokemon Twitter account. 
Chris took part and assigned people on Twitter to be characters in her fictitious Pokemon journey, selecting the first account that automatically was prompted to her, which included US President Donald Trump and some of her online friends. When an individual told her that since her account was protected, no one who did not follow her would see her tweet, asking when would she learn, Christine wrote back, never, promising to continue tagging accounts as necessary, closing with a LOL. An acronym You'd have to have a greenhouse with black off cloth because uh, they planted in February in like Afghanistan and India. And what it needs is it needs uh, 12 hours of light for two months, but it's not warm enough here anywhere in the U.S. But, you know, if you have a greenhouse, you give it those 12 hours of light for two months. And then you take the, you know, then you let it get 16 hours or more and it'll immediately start flowering. So it's like the opposite of weed. You know, weed, whenever it's growing, you grow it at 16 hours and you flip it to 12 and you want it to flower. This shit, the poppies are the exact opposite. And I know this because uh, I was researching that shit and on a, the United Nations fucking site of all places, for some reason it had how to grow them and all that shit. Which stood for actually laughing out loud. On June 8th, Chris found out that the free encyclopedia, Wikipedia, had an article about the Kiwi Farms Forum and requested for her to be omitted from the written history of the site. In addition, she wrote she would like to have her own Wikipedia page created for her, written in a positive light without any hate. Finally, she said she did not condone the role of Kiwi Farms in their so-called top three plant scandals, which left many people dead. Yeah, weed plants are also a beautiful plant. They really are. Hops are cool. Are really pretty plants for beer. There's lots of cool, you know, plants that look really, really neat. Or injured. On June twelfth, Christine wrote an extended Twitter thread explaining that she won't settle for a regular job because she was, in a sense, employed by deities to manage the dimensional merge. She also wrote the same message on her Patreon page to explain why she was unable to send the Sonichu comics to her paying patrons. On June 13th, Chris reflected on his graduation from Manchester High School in the year 2000, regretting that during the ceremony, he showed his anger at not being recognized for his artistic efforts by snatching away his diploma and storming off stage without shaking anyone's hand. She wished for people to identify those who were on stage so she could apologize to them. As an addendum, Christine wished for the domain of- I didn't go to my uh, graduation. I didn't see any of those fucking people, and I had no desire to see them for one second longer than I had to. So whenever we got out of school, you know, before graduation, I just went to the city, man. Hung out and got drunk with my friends and stoned and shit like that, you know? Of the Christian wiki, the quickie, to be changed from sonichu.com to quickie.com so she could eventually claim the Sonichu domain for her own website project run by a trusted friend. When a Twitter user asked her why she couldn't use her superpowers to track down the people from the ceremony, she answered that she was still getting used to her powers, which remained unpredictable. I know, poor Europe, they didn't have peppers and tomatoes and squash, but the Europeans had the better cheese and meat, though, so, you know, it all kind of came together and was good. And wild. Later that day, Chris wrote a tweet thread in which she revealed that Jesus Christ allegedly told her that he and his mother, Emmanuel, had been working really hard in the dimensional merge, which was in its final stages and would take place in the coming days. Jesus was reaching out. Yeah, I was the guy that when everybody else was standing up and clapping and all that shit at the fucking school, uh, rallies i was just talking to my friend because i did not give a single fuck about that bullshit i didn't rise for nothing i didn't clap for nothing man fuck yeah out in all of their real world dimensions churches holy spots portals pokestops and pokemon gyms but also asked christine to extend the reach of his message and tell everyone to believe in the original characters created by themselves and others also on that same day she wrote on Twitter that her mother, Barbara, had been badgering her for damned money again. So Chris advertised a quilted throw blanket for sale on the auction marketplace website eBay for $225, including shipping. In addition, 
Christine made a YouTube video addressing trolls mail she had been receiving, which was jokingly addressed to major YouTuber PewDiePie. She claimed in the video title that PewDiePie did not live at her address and instead lived in Sweden. Though born in Sweden, PewDiePie in actuality lived in the United Kingdom. Hello everybody, Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again. Sounds like you had a good time, Andy. <laughs> and today, I'm setting something straight. Every so often, every so often, and this ticks me off because not only does the actual person does not get the mail, but I hate to forward it is impossible for me because I don't... Yeah, look at how big the pupils are. Chris is in total schizophrenic psychosis right now if you ever seen anybody with pupils this big they're either on meth or crazy than a motherfucker or both don't have his address and he lives in sweden felix Aved kzilberg also known as p e w d pi does not live here at rockers of virginia two two nine six eight and I never, ever, ever want to see another piece of mail addressed to him sent to me here. And PewDiePie, please, please, please put a mailing address on your YouTube channel to where your fan mail and everything can actually be sent to. Please, please, thank you. Chris then went to Twitter to post a photo of all the hate mail that a single person sent to her multiple times per month. She wrote that she did not open the envelopes as they were transparent both to... I think it's completely obvious that neither capitalism nor communism works at this point. I mean, am I right or am I wrong? You know? <laughs> ...light and her psychic powers and would be sending them all back. Afterwards, she notified PewDiePie's Twitter account that she would be sending back all mail addressed to the YouTuber and I'm asked... I'm pretty sure we have. I think we have. This is 71. I watched a bunch of these fuckers. <laughs> but Chris is in full. I'm the goddess CPU blue heart. So, you know, it's got interesting again. Some of it's not interesting. It's just shit. It's just fucking sick. You know what I mean? Like you're just like there with your mouth open, listening to Gino read the shit he said. For him to make a public address to let his fans know the correct address to which they should send fan mail. Finally, on June 13th, Chris posted a video. I'm more of like an anarchist myself. I think most people would be fine without a government. You know what I mean? Affairs should be handled on a local level. Like, you know, like in Greece and Sparta, you know, whenever everyone went out for the city, you know, and they're like, well, do you want to build this drainage canal? You know, yay or nay? You know, you know, that's how it should be, really. Video in which she asks for people to believe in the original characters or OCs and deities in regards to the dimensional merge. We have a bit of a situation. Turns out, while we do have a good number of believers in DLCs, CPUs, deities, and everyone between our sister dimension of C197 and their, their surrounding dimensions, and right here, dimension 1218, we could do a whole lot better in the believers. Even Jesus Christ himself came to me earlier today, told me so, asked me to relay the message. Everybody believe in the OCs and everybody, the dimension merge is happening. And we could definitely make the dimension merge happen a whole lot faster and over with. Definitely for the better benefit of everybody, everybody. Within both our dimensions and the combined dimensions. Just give them a thought. Give your OCs a thought. Any of them. Whether they be branded, not branded. Your creations. Someone else's creations. So forth. Sanchi wrote you. The CPUs. Uh, anime characters. And Magic Chan. If you can see him right now, he's literally sitting right here. Anyway, Jesus Christ himself and our God, Emmanuel, they're all ceased too. Though they literally are 
those that have words here, like, you know, your Lord Jesus Christ sacrificed himself for real here. He's an OC. I'm an OC. If anything, between you and your self counterparts, you, every one of you is an OC as well. So if anything, you believe in everyone else, you believe in yourselves as well. All right? And more importantly, don't hate. All right? We don't need any hate anymore. Yeah, I know. The, you know, the roads that people always say, yeah, if the world was like, you know, you know, like anarchy, the people that own the roads would keep them perfect. You know, like the turnpikes, you know, but you got to pay to use them. So like for your ride to work, you'd probably have to pay a quarter to, you, you know, use the fucking someone else's roads. But, you know, they'd be like the Indian fucking turnpikes in Oklahoma and shit. They'll be perfect, awesome ass fucking roads always. Our hate raid, especially freaking hey family how you doing <laughs> cyber boys and bad internet trolls but this, aside from that believe in the ocs believe in your ocs believe in yourself as an oc believe in jesus christ emmanuel who emmanuel by the way god is a woman and i have personally met them face to face if you don't believe me in that, I've literally touched Jesus' hands. I cry every time I feel that scar in his hands. Cross when he did that, but still. Anyway, as a Chris, God might not hate you, but you're definitely trying his patience right now. <laughs> Guys, myself, I am unable to worship jesus or any of the other deities but i am friends with jesus and all the other deities including cpus so the least i could do is support them and be a friend that's what i do to the best of my abilities everywhere my soul my brain my body literally working round the clock everywhere and I'm flying by to see my pants by each thing that comes in so I can relay it out to you via my Twitter or whatever. But in the meantime, believe. Believe in all of us OCs and everything. And the dimension merge. It's happening. We're approaching our end game. And we are destined and fated to win. So follow my motivational speech, please, and follow our lead. We will complete this merge. We will all be existent and coexistent with each other. And we will be able to hang out fully with our own creations. I'm very serious about that. It's happening. It's happening. Believe. Thank you. Have a good day. On June 14th, Chris listed the complete set of Sonichu comic books for sale on eBay in a single $170 bundle. The bundle also included the Chris Chan prequel comic by Brian Frogboy and Rose Chu's story, which apart from the Chris penned front cover, was entirely written and illustrated by QB Farms user Tricky. Christine further wrote on Twitter that all orders would be directly shipped from the book printing company and so would not include any custom orders or autographs. She realized that the rewards she listed on Patreon, such as custom book orders and autographing and shipping them herself, cost her extra time and money, which she could not handle because of her dedication to the dimensional merge. The next day, Chris's avid follower, Jacob Sockness, received the blanket which he purchased from her eBay account. He proceeded to announce that he asked a hypothetical mirror who was the sexiest oddest, and it allegedly replied that it was Sockness. The tweet also included four photos of Jacob laying on the blanket and posing seductively in an array of revealing clothing. On June 16th, she dedicated the year's Father's Day to her father, Bob Chandler, posting on Twitter a photo of a newspaper clipping of her dad being celebrated for his contributions to General Electric. 
Chris celebrated his patents and achievements, which apparently directly led to many technological advancements, such as three-dimensional printing. She reflected that Bob told her to live her life to the best, and that he was currently a very intelligent man slash Sonichu, who after the dimensional merge, would be able to hug Chris's mother Barbara once more. Christine shared a picture she drew of Chris Chan Sonichu with her Old Chris, man, look at this shit. Everyone still prays to the CPUs, Jesus, Buddha, Zeus, and so forth for us to work our magic on their back. Fucking Chris. ...would be able to hug Chris's mother, Barbara, once more. Christine shared a picture she drew of Chris Chan Sonichu with her father in Sonichu form, Robert Chu, reflecting that since that drawing, her father had allegedly changed his fur color from plaid to almost all red because it was hard for her to color a plaid pattern. It was at around this time that Chris's eBay account was restricted and all her listings were removed, likely due to her overall positivity rating of 85%, an exceptionally low figure for the site. On June 17th, she tweeted asking her followers if they also felt like it was the same day for a number of consecutive days or when a day has passed, though it felt like a whole week. On June 19th, Christine finally acknowledged that her eBay account had been restricted and that her PayPal account was in debt. She stated that every direct $170 donation to her PayPal account would function as payment for the Sonichu Cox bundle and will order the set of books for the donators. Jacob Sockness did not entertain the idea of using the financial company to purchase the comics, for he did not trust Chris to fulfill orders on the count of her failings with Patreon. Not long after her announcement, someone presumably donated the aforementioned amount, bringing her PayPal account out of debt, and notified the unknown buyer that their book order would soon be shipped out after printing. When someone accused Christine of setting the $170 price to allow for herself $100 for shipping and profits, she clarified that printing cost $110, $30 for 3-day shipping, and the remaining $30 for her personal profit. Well, Deciduous is being a fucking troll because I never talk about not losing weight in Wyoming. If you don't really, haven't been eating, you lose weight. That's what happens. Also on June 19th, keep that bitch, Chris and her Keep that bitch high 24-7. She doesn't seem nearly as crazy when she's high mother attended their scheduled court hearing in regards to two cases of debt owed to Portfolio Recovery Associates. QB Farms user, Sige Sige. I know, right? Fucking poor old Bob dies and then Chris is like, he's a sonnet you now. Bergnick personally attended the hearing and later on gave an account of what they witnessed. Probably at the end of the day, I think Methica wants some Cobra bucks. She wants some donations for Cobra fans. 11.03 a.m. Chris and Herb arrive. More accurately, I hear Chris sighing, squealing, and whining as he sets off the metal detector at the main door of the court, repeatedly. They come into the courtroom and sit down in relative quiet. 11.05 a.m. Chris starts playing with a fidget spinner. 11.07 a.m. Chris starts making ridiculous noises, raspberries, light shrieks, grunts, etc. Barb shushes him. Chris replies to her discipline with, We're taking a break so I can make a little noise if I want. This was delivered in the tone of voice of a smug yet pouting six-year-old. 11.12 a.m. Chris starts making whoop-whoop noises and singing a childish tune that largely consists of him going la-la-la-la-la in yet another six-year-old's tone of voice. Strangely enough, the first time I ever encountered him in public, 
late last February slash early March. He was singing something virtually identical. Yeah, I know. She got four kids. What you want to bet? She got at least two baby daddies. As he was walking down the street, the fidget spinner is still going. 11.22 a.m. Ten minutes of relative quiet are broken by another of Chris's noise-making fits. This time, it's a giant hiccup, followed by sighs, squeals, and more fidget spinner as he grunts at no one in particular. Yeah, that's who that weird girl was, was uh, Mathica. She, well, the one where she's in the shower, she's sitting there with her clothes on, and she has the water running, and her mom's like, quit running the fucking water, and she's like, I'm washing my face. You know, Jessica's pretty fucked up. 11.23 a.m. Chris tears himself away from the fidget spinner long enough to make a comment to Barb about something. Oh, someone said she had four kids. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure. Thing to do with hairy legs. Couldn't make out the first part of it to the acoustics, but she shushed him again. The six-year-old voice came out again to say, But they are hairy legs, followed by something else unintelligible and more fidget spinner. 11.27 a.m. Judge sits down again, starts getting the 11.30 session underway. 11.33 a.m. While that's going on, Chris starts babbling very audibly. The judge glares at Barb. Barb shushes the man-child. Unsettlingly, it was in your glossolalia level of babble. The fidget spinner has finally been put away, thank God. 11.50 a.m. Chris and Barb left the court with the judge's permission to speak with the prosecution attorney in private room, Ari, his case. Barb wasn't allowed in and hung around in the foyer waiting for him. A few things that... Cobes is already the cuck husband. Yes, ma'am. I'm not yelling at you. It's okay. Please calm down. We're not, no one, uh, you're yelling at me. I'm not yelling. You know, <laughs> he's a cuck husband already. Should be pointed out. Barb's looking worn out. There's no good way to describe or emphasize this adequately, but it's worse than I can ever remember seeing her. Her hair is completely white. The hollow eyed thousand yard stare is now going out even further than that and her general demeanor is that of someone who has taken all they can and has retreated into a shell that they only emerge from to shout out something vitriolic once in a while. She's getting around okay physically, but functionally reminds me of an edamame pod. Chris, honestly, not too much change there, at least physically. Behaviorally, however, he basically seems to be seriously sliding down the slope into trying hard to revert to childhood. At present, this is likely his strongest defense mechanism against Barb's decline. Real-world responsibilities, like creditor judgments, and... Really? I didn't know that. Yeah, I'll look into that stuff one of these days. I'm sure it's probably on the King Cobra wiki, probably. Slack of social skills bearing down on him. Granted, this is an assessment being made from a completely non-professional standpoint, but it's also not the first time I've seen something like this, and he's exhibiting the signs. The case was finalized. The vengeance of heaven is slow but sure is a saying I like. As to that day, and Chris was ordered to pay back a total of $2,681.70 to Portfolio Recovery Associates. On June 23rd, Christine wrote a tweet thread reflecting on the Sonichu comic that was heavily influenced by the idea guys Joshua Wise and Stephen Boyd. Everyone, I am in agreement with at Magichan111448 that the adequate minimum number of peoples of this world, so far, have had a chance to read the book that I had written during the time of, and a bit after, when I was awakening as a CPU, also known as the time, hashtag idea guy Josh Wise, totally tried to screw and mess up C197, the other CPUs, themselves, everyone else and me from october 2017 to april 2018 for now for those of everyone who have yet to read it i leave the highlights of the book i ended up drawing and writing of the true events that all literally and actually took place during that time and the negative effects of hashtag idea guy josh wise and his oc hashtag johnson wiles put us all through it is likely that during that time, simultaneously, here in 1218, other people and individuals have felt some of the side. 
effects along with us, so please feel free to share your respective worries. And if y'all would like the full printed copy of the book, it is free with purchase of the other Sonichu books in the set at this time. And the direct way to get the set quick for yourself is to send to me no less than $170 directly via PayPal. After receiving the monies, and be sure to include your address when sending the funds, I shall swiftly order the books and have them shipped to you directly from my printing company. My personal takeaway from the book is that I, personally, feel better keeping the back of the book facing forward, because I like and appreciate how it completed and came full circle. I also do appreciate the circumstances that introduced me to it all, including calling, my very own at Sega Dreamcast that literally turned out to be this dimension's counterpart to the spiral console that kept Uzume, the CPU orange heart, confined for years. While my Dreamcast only had the seal, but I still ended up with a direct link and close friend link. With her for two weeks. That was really wild, epic, and totally cool. Hashtag idea guy Josh Wiles shall pay for his crimes of extortion from me and then some, because his damage was DIMENSIONS DAMAGING that only I had the ability to undo, with the help in being guided to do so by at Magichan111448 and her friends and allies who are mildly to not affected by the effects of the month's worth of, well, the worst parts of it, to say the least. That is all for now. Thank you all for your support, interest, and sincere kindness. Alongside her tweets, she shared a selection of preview pages from the Awakening of a CPU comic. On June 24th, Chris wrote that she considered selling the Awakening comic for free, but decided against it because it cost money to print it and ship it, and that the money was needed in the house, hence why she bundled it with the complete Sonichu collection bundle, though mentioned that she was not getting orders. She wrote she would autograph one Sonichu comic per person at the upcoming My Little Pony convention, BronyCon, limiting fans to only one book since she wanted time to enjoy the convention herself. On June 25th, Chris made her restricted Twitter account public, meaning it was from then on visible to everyone. The next day, she liked a tweet about being kind to one another from illustrator and voiceover artist Doopy Dooover who had years before blocked Chris due to her overbearing attachment to the artist. Later on, Christine wrote on Twitter that since many things were going on, she was apparently feeling the psychic brunt force of it, which included chest tightening and other feelings. She asked her followers to say a prayer for her. She then went to her Magichan Sonichu Twitter account to write under the guise of being her alleged husband that Christine recently had a heart attack in relation to events happening between dimensions and so asked followers to pray to and for her. The alleged Magichan soon after wrote that Christine apparently went to the emergency room of a hospital after the attacks and has since stabilized, though the chest tightening continued intermittently. She was taking medicine in the form of aspirin and Tylenol, and was resting in bed as her alleged spouse's Mewtwo and Magichan himself looked after her. Later that day, Chris added a YouTube video to a custom playlist, a five-hour long video featuring binaural beats, or special sound frequencies, advertised to invoke lucid dreaming in the listeners. Later again, she uploaded the uncolored front cover and the first eight uncolored pages of her proposed Sonichu Ish 14 comic, also known as Awakening of a CPU Book 2. Among the new pages, she mentions that she allegedly suffered three heart attacks in a single minute before writing further about her hopes for the expeditious completion of the dimensional merge. Chris wrote that her uncontrollable, long, loud belches and frequent moments of deja vu were signs that the merge was still progressing. On June 27th, Christine uploaded a Twitter video in which she balances a My Little Pony USB flash drive on her fingers until it wavers and falls to the ground, believing this is the result of her psychic powers. The following day, Chris updated her Patreon with new pages for Sonichu issues 14 and 15. 
the vast majority of pages were only visible to patrons paying at least a certain amount, though a few individuals, like Kui Forms user Sturban Chu, became patrons in order to leak the new pages to the interested public. Chris also added nine new monthly Patreon payment levels, or quote-unquote, tears, which incrementally increased in single-dollar amounts, ranging from $1 up to $9. The so-called tears did not offer any additional perks, except for thoughts of thanks from Chris. Some observers speculated that for Sonichu issue 15, which would function as a reboot for the series going back to the origins of Sonichu and Rosechu, she was plagiarizing from the fan comic Rosechu's Story by Tricky. On Twitter, Christine defended the similarities between the comics by claiming that she and Tricky had discussed years ago that it would be fine for Chris to reference Rose Chu's story in her own comics, and that since Sonichu and Rose Chu were mainly her property, haters and trolls had no rhyme or reason to shit on her. Tricky herself later confirmed on Twitter that Christine had her permission to use as much or as little of her comic for reference as she liked as long as she did not use Tricky's artwork. However, when comparing new Sonichu pages, readers believed that Chris was likely tracing over Tricky's original panels, though Tricky herself did not think this was the case. On June 30th, Chris asked on Twitter if anyone, preferably famed Lucid Dreamers, could help her regain her abilities to Lucid Dream, which she had lost over the past week. She then shared an article from the NBC News Network describing scientists entertaining the possibility of a parallel universe and claimed this was evidence of the dimensional merge. Chris also attached two uncolored pages from Sonichu issue 14, one of which describes the conclusion of her supposed heart attack episode. She wrote that on June 28th, she went to the doctor to discuss her possible heart attacks, which the doctor determined was a gastro-related problem, and recommended that she take the antacids Tums when necessary. Chris also claims to have wowed the doctor with her psychic powers. Based on the illustration on the page, it appears that she demonstrated the so-called rubber pencil trick for the doctor by holding a pencil on one end and shaking it up and down, creating an illusion of a bendy pencil, which rendered the doctor speechless. She further elaborated that she had a goddess-level quest to complete in the Dreamverse that required her to be in a deep sleep dreaming level. When a Twitter user asked her if she would consider therapy, Christine answered, Been there, done that. Therapy is beneath the high level this is, and I have been to plenty of therapy and psychologist sessions before. They lack the sufficient knowledge that is beyond what was printed in their textbooks. On July 1st, Chris posted another video on Twitter of her demonstrating her supposed psychic powers, in which she balances a large amethyst stone in her hand and slowly turns her wrist until it falls down writing that her powers were growing since Amethyst has weight, unlike the plastic USB stick. The following day, Jacob Sockness walked in the San Francisco Pride Parade, wearing a shirt reminiscent of Chris's The Classic, a replica Sonichu medallion, and also the shoes he bought from her on eBay. Also on that day, the debt garnishment case with Midland funding was closed, ruling in favor of Christine, meaning that her funds would not be taken to pay back her debts. She afterwards went to Twitter to express her enthusiasm at the announcement of a soon-to-be-released remake of the vintage computer Commodore 64, hoping it would include floppy disk and cassette tape drives, since she still possessed games. My day's been pretty good. This is starting to get interesting again. There's only, shit, 14 left. For the computer in their original state. Chris then posted a photo of her collection of Commodore 64 games and programs. On July 3rd, the Sonichu official merchandise Twitter account posted a photo of Christian in the early 2000s, posing in his classic shirt, along with one of Jacob Sockness imitating his pose in a similar outfit asking readers who wore the outfit better. Christine questioned whether Sockness's shirt was originally produced by Ralph Lauren, like hers was. 
Chris later suggested that Jacob should lose some weight in his belly and that his suggestive profile banner was unsettling for her. Jacob himself soon responded, mentioning his so-called teddy bear softness in an attempt to sexually tease Christine. Sonichu official merchandise wrote back that he should hit the gym if Sockness was to get Chris's affection, referring to her with male pronouns. Chris then corrected them. On July 4th, Christine angrily addressed the lax Google moderation rules which allowed anyone to edit her Sonichu headquarters business listing. Many people uploaded pictures referencing Chris's past trolling sagas, poor living situation, and her penchant for begging for money. Also on that day, Chris went to Patreon to update her supporters with new pages for Sonichu issue 15 and blamed the idea guys for the delay in the completion of the comic. Realizing that it had been quite, quite the while since I resumed a few days ago and when I ended up stopping in book 15, thanks to the events involving idea guy and Johnson Wiles, I ended up messing up on Rosie's young and short bosoms. I could kill them both. Hey, Jack, you are. How you doing? After they and Boyd extorted six frigging thousand dollars from me during those developmental and very eventful months in full plus interest. She then wished on Twitter a happy birthday to the United States of America as it was the date of the nation's Independence Day and wished a very merry unbirthday to everyone else. A birthday like... I've been high, that's for sure. <laughs> I'm high as hell right now. Celebration occurring on all days apart from one's birthday, first mentioned in the 1871 novel Through the Looking Glass by Lewis Carroll. On July 8th, Christine announced on her Patreon page that she would be attending the upcoming and final BronyCon convention. But thanks to bills and things, funds for her travel and attendance have been slipping out. She pleaded for people to join her Patreon, as she was still busy coloring new pages and providing her supporters with new exclusive content, in addition to her work in both dimensions. She also wrote on Twitter the reasons why she needed funds. And if you must know why, room accommodations. My main plan with two friends who had reserved a room for us three and had their passes, they fell off the communications map on me. So I am in a major bind. Please, hashtag help Chris Ch Sonichu get to BronyCon. Chris then shared a link for her PayPal account, stating if anyone were to donate to her $600, she would deliver them a personally signed and bagged complete set of Sonichu comic books. When asked on Twitter why would she consider going to BronyCon when she had money troubles at home, Chris replied, I'm going. I must. Alright? I have my reasons. Besides, which? People want to see me and meet me, and they want to see me happy. I want to meet and make my fans happy. I want to partake and enjoy the panels and events and share in everyone's happy feeling. So, help me help you feel more content and happy in the moments during BronyCon, please. As BronyCon soon approached, Christine clamored for any hope of recapturing the perceived love and acceptance she felt during the previous convention. For her, it was an escape from a world of bullying, demands, responsibilities, and accountability to a small part of the world where she would have freedom and not be judged and ridiculed. She would do all she was willing to in order to achieve that release, if only for a moment. What made her this way? What is the attraction? 
What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. Daniel freaking the fuck out, man. We're going to get to see some craziness from Daniel soon. He was screaming and yelling. I've never seen him as angry as he was earlier, ever. On July 9th, 2019. I was going to say, yeah, it's good that he's banned from BabsCon. I don't think there's too many of them pony conventions left, are there? There's probably like, what, maybe one of them, maybe that BabsCon that's still going. Because I can't see that show having a lot of fans because it's been off the air for like, I don't know, a few years now, right? I think. Response to Christine's recent pleas to acquire funds for her trip to the My Little Pony convention, BronyCon. The Sonichu official merchandise Twitter account suggested that she should start selling her bathwater, referencing the recent marketing campaign of social media star and erotic model Belle Delphine, who sold vials of what was purported to have been her used bathwater. Chris rejected the idea because she was not perverted and did not find buying used underwear appealing either. In addition, she could not sell bathwater since she took showers instead. After a short while, according to leaked private messages, Chris seemingly reconsidered and directly messaged the Trollson merchandise account asking if they would be willing to sell jars of her bathwater on her behalf since she could not use her restricted eBay account. They declined her offer. On the social site Reddit, her devout follower, Jacob Sockness, revealed that the Sonitru merchandise account had falsely told Chris that he was interested in buying her bathwater, which Jacob at the time had no financial means of purchasing. He elaborated that it was instead necessary for Chris to send him some custom-made holy water infused with her own juices, which Sockness would use in his magic rituals. Upon believing that Sockness was interested in financially helping her, Chris finally followed his Twitter account. On July 10th, Christine declared that if 10 people were to buy her complete Sonichu comic book sets at $170 each within the next day, she would definitely be able to afford the accommodations during her BronyCon stay in Baltimore, Maryland. She then went to her alternative Magichan Twitter account and posed as her supposed husband, Magichan, writing that Christine knew more about the dimensional merge than any troll who criticized her and boasted about her growing powers of moving objects with her mind. Also on that day, Chris updated her Patreon supporters with altered pages from her Sonichu issue 8 comic, mostly changing the birthdays of the Sonichus and Rosechus to match with the information that was dictated to her by the Idea Guys. July 11th, Chris posted on Twitter two photos from 1993 that her mother Barbara had found, one of Christian with his father Bob accepting the letter which awarded him a $1,000 shopping spree at the KB Toys toy store after winning a competition from the Sonic the Hedgehog cartoon, and another of Barbara taken at around the same time. On July 14th, Jacob Sockness tweeted, with Christine's approval, that he decided to create an eBay account on her behalf and would use his closet as a storage warehouse for all of her products and sell them on the auction site, splitting profits 2080 in Chris's favor. When members of the Kiwi Farms suggested that Jacob would simply use unsold items for his own personal gain, he denied this claim on Twitter, calling Christine a true friend. Not long after, Sockness started a campaign on the fundraising site GoFundMe, aiming to raise $300 to kickstart the necessary funding for the purchases of boxes needed to contain Chris's sold items. On that same day, Chris announced that she received a generous donation from a fan and was able to book a room for the weekend she would spend at the convention. The next day, the Sonichu official merchandise Twitter account trollishly claimed that they would have a merchandise booth at BronyCon where they would sell Sonichu merchandise and give 100% of the proceeds to the Organization for Autism Research. On July 16th, Jacob Sockness revealed that he was in the process of crafting a golem, or a living entity made of inanimate substance, that would be brought to life via a nine-day sex ritual from the most evil book in his possession, which required semen. Two days later, 
Christine updated her Twitter followers with a new colored page from Sonichu issue 15, a remake of Sonichu and Rose Chu's first kiss, as seen in Sonichu issue 0, which upon observation seemed to be heavily referencing the poses of the protagonists as depicted in Tricky's fan comic, Rose Chu's story. Also on July 18th, Christine elaborated on the updated canonical history of Rose Chu's genitalia. For everyone who was asking about Rosia privates as they were back in 2003, she had both sets of parts, but all of the female internal parts functional. The female update happened when she had transformed from Raichu to Rose Chu, though she still had the dick. As for other details, I have typed up the following before today to elaborate a bit further. She then shared screenshots of private text messages. Hey. Another let you know, help me remember. Rosie kept her penis until early 2008. During 07, she found her dick beginning to become unnecessary and functional, so she decided to schedule to have it removed by Dr. Silvestri Chu, one of the special sonichus who is a very well-practiced, read, educated, certified, and qualified professional in as many medical fields possible, two days before her birthday in 2008 allow a day for initial recovery, so she would enter her day anew as a full-fledged woman. This is an important detail to know, because I have been updating Book 8, where in the early part of the book, they have sex on the night of November 3rd, 2007. Her dick had become more dormant beforehand, while still being existent inside her, practically not coming out to play or becoming erect at all anymore. And, thus, her ability to photograph herself the following day, in response to the trolls who were doing all that shit against me and my sonichus and rose chews and so forth. So, yeah, not even Jason Kendrick Hal was getting free cock when she punched at him when she did after he flung a pickle at the back of her head. On July 22nd, the former enablers Sarah and Steve announced to Chris that they apologized for letting her down and hoped that the three could spend some time together in the future. They later on defended their previous actions, denying claims that they were quote-unquote fucking with Christine, and that they genuinely only wanted to help her and become friends. When asked, one of the pair answered that they lost their job, which put their proposed plans to move to Virginia and help Chris on pause, which upset Christine in addition to their failure to respond to her messages, in a similar vein to how Chris had ignored Sarah and Steve before. By July 23rd, she had been updating her Patreon supporters with daily updates of at least one new page from Sonichu issue 15, with many suggesting that her seeming improvement in art style and high output of content was due to her tracing the panels from Tricky's Rosechu story comic. Chris denied the claims on Twitter. She admitted to using Tricky's art as reference for her own work and wrote that it helped her muscle memory greatly by copying the fan comics panels, helping her improve her own drawing capabilities. She commended Tricky's art style and that Chris's own dialogue heavy comics were defensible since she had a ton of wisdom and thoughts to share. Tricky then addressed these claims on the Kiwi Farms, declaring that she knew for Oh, yeah, I'm doing good, Sparky. How you doing? fact that Chris was simply referencing her comic. She provided a still image from a video chat they had, which demonstrated how Christine had the Rose Chew story comic next to the new pages she was drawing, hence referencing the artwork and not directly tracing, which was allowed under the terms of their agreement. On July 25th, Jacob Sockness revealed that Chris included the demon Jacoba, who he allegedly knew, in her Sonichu comic depicting his death at the hooves of her pony characters, Mary Sue and Gary Stu. On that same day, Sockness wrote a vague tweet concerning a perilous quest, accompanied by two photographs of smoky apparitions caught in his apartment. Chris replied, hinting that the two communicated in length concerning Jacob's possessions at the hands of demons and extraterrestrial entities and his knowledge of the Rokot alien civilization from the Andromeda galaxy, taking Sockness's claims as truth and valuable research. Soon after, Jacob claimed to have shared a dream with Chris during a failed ritual, wherein he was with her in Quickville's mayoral office, along with Magichan. At around the same time, 
Sockness revealed that he was planning a several months visit to Chris's house sometime in early 2020, when they would perform the ritual which would complete the dimensional merger. Also on July 25th, the Sarah and Stephen Twitter account asked observers what they should do to help Christine if they had the power to do so, positing that she would disown them if they were to question her beliefs, and indirectly asked Chris if she really would. Around two hours later, they confirmed that possibly after seeing their recent tweet, Christine unfollowed Sarah and Stephen on Twitter, with the pair concluding that her mental health was too far gone to accept any form of doubt in her thoughts, though within a day, she refollowed their account. Later again, Chris shared a newly released album for which she drew the cover art by EDM artist Easy K, who interviewed her on a podcast along with artist Meriwether in 20. Help me, Bob! Help! Fuck you, Bob! Fuck you! Yeah, it was funny. I thought it was hilarious. 17. In addition, one of her patrons, who ardently defended her and allegedly paid her $200. I don't know, man. I'm surprised, you know, Cobra should just rent a house. Not a duplex. He has to rent a house. Because if he rents a house, his neighbors will be far enough away from Jessica and him that when they fight and scream at each other, uh, they won't hear it, you know? To order the production of a custom Sonichi medallion was blocked by her on Twitter, and so then called Chris a repulsive person after all that they and others had done to support her mentally and financially. On July 30th, Christine uploaded to YouTube an announcement of her upcoming attendance at BronyCon. Hello everybody, Christine Chandler coming to you live from home once again and... Yes, I'm, yeah, I'm going to BronyCon this weekend from the August from August 1st to the 4th. All four days. Getting there on Thursday morning and so forth. But let's be real, all right? I mean, I'm not going to be welcoming of hatred or malcontent. And you're going to get reported to security by me personally if you do anything bad. And I'm not going to do anything bad, so don't make any stupid false stories about me or shit or try to set me up even. That's plain stupid. All right? Anyway, you know me better. I'm, I'm more pleasant. I'm more kind. I'm more honest and sincere and everything. Approach me kindly, and it's all good. Approach me badly, and... So do you think Chris will ever start wearing makeup? You know, do you think that Chris should definitely wear makeup because, you know, Ben Franklin ain't working for him. Anyway, hope to see all the good people at BronyCon. 2015-ish is when uh, Chris, originally Chris started uh, instead of HRT, Chris took uh, uh, some kind of estrogen cream that's for women that rub on their breasts whenever they have uh, hot flashes. And Chris is so stupid, he was using that, and he, got, he ordered it from a like in one of them Indian pharmacies, you know, that'll sell you whatever you want without a prescription. Well, he ordered it there, and he was using that. But now Chris has uh, actual HRT. That's what Chris is on now. But in the beginning, Chris was just doing some fucking retarded shit, you know. <laughs> Be respectful, be kind, be positive to each other. Have a good, safe day. On August 1st, Chris declared on Twitter that she was currently driving to BronyCon, located in Baltimore, Maryland, some 140 miles from Murkersville, Virginia. She photographed herself wearing a handmade tiara made of wire in the shape of the Commodore computer logo to signify her supposed significance as the goddess-like console patron unit of the Commodore consoles. Soon after, she tweeted again to say that she had arrived at the convention center. From the very start of the day, she was greeted by many people who identified themselves as her fans and asked to take selfies with her. For that day, she dressed up in costume. I've seen some very ugly women that whenever they put on makeup, they actually look really good. I've seen, you know, different tutorials on the internet. That's why you always take a girl swimming. That way her makeup will wash off and you see what she really looks like. Nah, just kidding. <laughs> or cosplayed as Chris, also known as Crystal, the playable character from the game Pokemon Crystal. Hi, 
Hi, Jacob. This is Christine Chandler coming to you live from Brighton. Here's to you being a good fan of mine. Cheers with a whole mug of sarsaparilla. Also during the first day of the convention, she met with webcomic artist and YouTuber Ben Saint, who in 2016 made a popular video in the form of an educational lecture on the storyline of the Sonichu comic book series. On the morning of August 2nd, Chris posted a photo of her hotel room and commented on her positive experiences of the first day of BronyCon, which included meeting with many kind fans and internet celebrities. For day two, she is Baltimore dangerous? I feel like Baltimore was really, really up there on the murder capital at one point. Are they still up there like that? I don't know. On her pony ear hairband, strap on unicorn horn, and pink wings, which she first utilized during the 2017 BronyCon. Early on, she was filmed wishing rapper and YouTuber Billy the Fridge a happy upcoming birthday. The video was later included in a special YouTube compilation video to celebrate the rapper's birthday. Hi, Billy. This is Christine Chandler coming to you live from Bernie Con. You're an awesome dude and you have an awesome day. You better up then. Billy, what's up? You're not tall. You don't like giant chicken. Oh, right. <laughs> in the evening, Christine attended the From the Matrix to Silence of the Lambs panel which featured My Little Pony-themed YouTube voice actors performing famous movie scenes as MLP characters, during which she placed her Nightstar Pony plush doll in the seat beside her, as if to allow it to observe. Read from sheets. I am... I am... I am Sofa King. Sofa, Sofa King. King. We Todd Ed. We Todd Ed. Now repeat all very fast, please. I am Sofa King. Faster. I am Sofa King. We Todd Ed. No, not fast. Lose this meaning. I am Sofa King. We Todd Ed. You say funny thing. Observe the panel itself. She also met with MLP artist Choco Pony complimenting his comic, and gifted him a copy of the MLP-themed Sonichu issue 12-9. Later that night, Chris went to the Grand Galloping Gala concert, performed by costumed singers and dancers, where she and all other attendees witnessed two convention-goers getting engaged. After the show, she took a photo with the cast for a set fee. On the third day, Chris attended the TF2 Analysis Anarchy panel, chaired by a number of liked bronies with history concerning her, including Dr. Wolf, whose YouTube videos were the basis of a short Sonichu comic and Lego counseling video. Towards the end of the panel, Mad Munchkin, who had blocked Chris on Twitter, was proposed to by her boyfriend. A video of the event was filmed by fellow panelist Lightning Bliss, who had also blocked Chris on Twitter. Afterwards, Christine went to the Pony Origins panel, hosted by Bonnie Zacherly, the designer of the direct precursor to MLP, the Hasbro produced My Pretty Pony Doll, and Lauren Faust, the creator of the latest generation of the MLP animated series, Friendship is Magic. During a question and answer session, Chris got the chance to ask Faust a question. And the relationship between the humans and the ponies. Um, did you think about wanting to do that originally for G4 in the earlier phases? Or did it just kind of like uh, it was rejected initially or not presented at all and then later figured out for like Equestria Girls? You know, I um, early on in the development process, I had considered that Hasbro might ask me to bring in Megan. They never did, like not even once, but I did have a little snippet of an idea, but I didn't I didn't need it, so I didn't really flesh it out. <laughs> ah, well at least it brought at least it all brought out the question, girls. Thank you. Sure. Chris afterwards gave to Faust a copy of Sonachu issue 12-9. She then met and photographed with Princess Celestia voice actress Nicole Oliver. Christine soon posted the photo of the two on Twitter, 
and many people in the tweet's replies alerted the actress of Chris's past deviancy. Oliver quickly went to Twitter herself to deny support. Yep, or... yep. <laughs> Even makeup looks makes Madonna look human, you know what I mean? <laughs> That's pretty bad. Or involvement in any disrespectful behavior. It was likely during this time that Christine was exposed to the fan-made trading card game Twilight Sparkle's secret ship fic folder, influenced by the internet-fueled concept of shipping or imagining hypothetical relationships between fictional characters, and pondered creating custom Sonichu-themed cards for it. On the night of Day 3, Chris attended I'm the, Brony Palooza. I'm the biggest nerd in the world. On Anime Web Turnpike, I bet you I read every single Tenshi Muyo, every single Romero One Half, and every single Dragon Ball Z fanfic in the 90s. Uza, a concert featuring musicians from the MLP community. She took pictures of her night star plush doll, seemingly enjoying the show. On August 4th, a couple of convention goers joined Christine in her car and drove together to a burger restaurant for lunch, where she talked about the dimensional merge and a new supposedly magical crystal she acquired, and showed off the binder filled with hand-drawn Sonichu comic book pages. On the drive back to the convention center, Chris played the mobile game Pokemon Go on both of her phones simultaneously while stopped at traffic lights. Upon the conclusion of the convention, she reflected on Twitter that she may have been recognized and approached by around 200 individuals, and thanked them all for allowing her to see sincere kindness and appreciation from everyone. Later on, she retweeted a post commanding fans of the My Little Pony Friendship is Magic TV show who would still continue to love it even after it concludes upon the completion of the current ninth season. Christine though added that the animated series would not end until season 14, as was apparently told to her by the actual characters of the show. She soon after shared photos of her purchases, which included autographs from many creators and actors present. Some Kiwi Farms members suggested that Chris spent over $1,000 during her stay at BronyCon. On August 5th, Chris wrote a multiple tweet thread regarding her difficult day. Okay, the following I will only say and type one time, so listen up, everyone. I had a rough outing today, and on the way home, after starting the van, I'm whammed in the face with a sulfuric odor. Ugh. Silvana and I confirmed that there is now something wrong with the air conditioner, so we will have it checked at the local auto repair soon. Also, while hardly any noted cable damage has occurred, I hit the bumper of a parked truck in a parking lot while I was thinking about the next stop in our set of errands. I promised my mother pizza, so rather than risk my life with the van, I go onto my Papa John's app and order a pizza. Guess what happens? 20 minutes later, no delivery, and the tracker confirmed that the order was cancelled, and we had the cash to pay for it, so I try a second. Time. Five minutes later. Cancelled! Then on the third time, I used my debit card and put a note on there that it really was me personally making the order, and I gave them my new phone number that time. They called me, and the manager of the local Papa John's where the order was placed. He informed me that there was no way that they were going to come to this address to deliver ever again. Hangry, I felt like I needed to sort this out in person and face to face on the matter of principle. I start to head out, and what happens next? Albemarle County police car drives in. This was in response to the minor damage hit. There was no visible damage at all on the other vehicle, and yet this happens making for whipped cream and cherry topper to the set of torture I have had to endure. I told the guy what happened, and my mother, being more calm than I was able to be at the time, we sorted it out, gave him our insurance info, and he went on his way. But I vented loud and proud, and after the damn unrequited arrests and dog pilings, I've had to also endure from Albert Mall. County police, I kicked his car five times. I have always wanted to do damage back at them for years, and it finally happened, and it felt so karma level zen and good. But I digress. After the cop left, I made my way to Papa John's and told him about my day and being hangry. 
he showed me something revolutionary. Page after page of calls and orders from people pretending to be my old phone number and my home address. And all of them voided. I risked my life in the van at this point going out now. But do you all know what this means? This address has been food blacklisted because of you bored pranking trolls and haters. I can only imagine and theorize how far this goes. I'll even bet that no matter from who or where I order from, even if I paid personally and in full, no food will be delivered here ever again. Even in times when I don't have an available vehicle at all, or even able to use at Uber. Which, by the way, they suck! Their app sucks! It does not work for me. You haters may laugh at yourselves now, but you all will be laughing out the other side of your face when fate, destiny, and karma smacks you hard and rough. Even possible, I'll have a tangible lightning bolt in my hand, and we'll see if you survive being paralyzed or worse. But, again, I digress. Despite what has happened, I actually feel like things are coming full circle. I feel successful. I feel like I was well heard and listened to. Oh, bonus! People saw Silvana roast you and Krizel roast you, fully visible. Man, one time, uh, I was on some of them bad drugs, methamphetamine, and, uh, I pulled out in the traffic and the person in the next lane pulled in the traffic and then barely bumped against my bumper, but it was their fault. But instead of stopping, you know, I was on drugs. So I fucking drove away in the fucking Ford Festiva and fucking I, I drove really, really fast. And then I turned off all my lights and I went down into an alley and we, me and my friend were sitting in the alley and, you know, it was, it was retarded. It was something completely fucking stupid. I, I definitely, definitely, definitely know exactly what you're talking about you for <laughs> and tangible by my side today and oh that's not the story i meant to tell when i was young i had a car as a 60s ford well i drove it one day when i was like 15 when i wasn't supposed to be driving it and shit because i was 15 and uh i ran into a ditch and i told my dad that i almost hit a deer fact that will never ever receive any prank order pizzas here again yep i feel successful as for you, prankster and hating a lot, I hope you feel proud of yourselves. I could be without a vehicle, and no food will be delivered here, thanks to you lot, you cruel, dirty scum. Deep breaths, calm mind, and meditate. That is all I will say. I feel like I got out a lot of stress today. Thank you. Lightning bolt, blue heart, lightning bolt emojis. Not long after. Chris updated her followers, writing that she ended up receiving the pizza she had paid for with her debit card and returned home safely. From August 8th, Christine began uploading new Sonic. It was a 1960 ga 67 Galaxy that was a beautiful fastback car. It had the 289 high performance, a 271 horsepower one. It had air conditioning, automatic transmission. So really, it had manual steering and brakes, though, but I don't mind. I kind of like that. You know, you, there's more of a feel for the road and the pedal and the brakes. But, yeah, and uh, the guy that I sold it to, he painted it red, and he made it a really nice car, and then uh, he wrecked it, and he got an ugly-ass 65, man. 67 was the good-looking one. 65 and 66 and 68 are ugly as fuck. Do issue 14 pages which largely functioned as an embellished, lightly illustrated diary of her experience at BronyCon. She highlighted that she was accompanied by her alleged spouses, Magic Chan and Krizel, with whom she danced at the Grand Galloping Gala, as well as an unknown guy and gal. Also on August Man, 8th, one of my friends got in a wreck the other day, and I was with the dumbass was talking about running. I'm like, no, don't fucking run. Jesus. I was like, you're going to turn this simple little... Fender bender into a fucking felony is what I told him. I was like, don't fucking run. The former enablers, Sarah and Steven, made their presence known on Twitter again after a lengthy absence, entertaining the idea that the dimensional merge may necessitate certain rituals to be performed in order for it to commence. Jacob Sockness agreed, revealing that Magic Chan needed to transfer into a host body with the help of Sockness's alleged magical powers. The next day, Chris tweeted a dream-inspired musing. I'm just putting this on here. Just heard in a dream. 
What do you call a Happy Meal served on Monday? Cold bananas. On August 11th, Jacob closed his previous fundraising campaign and launched a new one with a $3,000 goal to support his trip to Christine's house, where they would complete the merge, canceling his previous eBay scheme for the moment. Jacob wrote in the description, I'm planning to visit Christine and needs to fund the trip and actually have some fun over there. I have big plans for my BFF, Christine, and the dimensional merger. There will be some. I know a good amount about the Sockness part of this because uh, I watched like three or four Sockness videos before. We're flying for sure, but let's hope not. I have dreamed of meeting my true idol of worship and finally be able to assist her at the peak. Yeah, you need to always make sure to be approachable for your children. Don't be a mean asshole to them because if you're approachable and they know you're approachable, they'll tell you about shit like that. Whereas if you tell them about something like that and they fly off that you fly off the handle, they're not going to want to tell you anything again. And they're just going to lie every time something bad happens because, well, you're an asshole, you know, <laughs> peak of my occult power. Stockness also hinted that Sarah and Steve could also join him on his trip, opposition to which they were open. Also on that day. Christine wrote in length on Twitter that during BronyCon, she supposedly met with one Grizzly the Medic, a member of the Brony community who was recently revealed to have been a sexual predator preying on minors. She elaborated that he was cosplaying as a BronyCon security guard and identified himself to Chris as a big fan of hers. They took a photo together, even though she did have a bad feeling about Grizzly the Medic's demeanor. Further on, since Grizzly was 20 years old when he sexually conversed with a 14-year-old, Chris questioned the rightfulness of outlawing sexual relations between an 18-year-old individual and someone under the legal age of adulthood. Now, I am not by any means standing up for or defending Grizzly, but think about it. You're in high school, senior year, you've just turned 18 years old, but before, then, it was okay for you to date that hot 15-year-old cheerleader or jock, as you had been doing for a few months beforehand. Now she slash he is super off-limits. You turn 18, regardless of gender or gender identity. Everyone begins to see you as a... Ah, uh, that's not particularly the case. In a lot of states, there's a three-year uh, there's a three-year thing. So, like, if you're 18 and you fuck your 15-year-old girlfriend, you won't go to jail. You know, there's three-year leeway in a few states. I don't know. I know California and Texas are 18, bitch. You know, fucking, I knew an 18-year-old guy in fucking Texas that fucked a 17-year-old girl, and he got fucking a sex offender for the rest of his life because of that. I really, really feel bad for that guy. I really do. It's an adult. There are factual case points where mentally you are still a teenager, not yet fully into adulthood until 21 where that mindset is where everyone puts you at when you turned 18. I empathize the transition from going from dating most anybody within your classroom range, not counting the faculty, to where you may as well be having a difficult time finding your new sweetheart slash soulmate. I never got to date or experiment like that with anyone during my high school years. Hell, I still wish they'd offer a dating education class alongside sex ed. But that never crossed my mind. I was naive. But in this later age, I can empathize and compare with those I had witnessed from others around me back then in person, as well as what was heard of in televised media. It makes one feel like in these states, there should be a grace period from after the day of turning 18, like wait until high school graduation before you would have to ditch that cheerleader or jock's phone number for good or something. Pondering it further, the suppression that gets instilled upon us at the numbered age date and those of us who missed out on being amongst the popular ones who honestly were able to brag about. I made out with Jeremy under the bleachers during the big game against Milwaukee. Or Jessica and I enjoyed a Pepsi and a couple of chili dogs before hitting the showers by my room and making passion behind my lenient parents' backs. Essentially, missed opportunities! doing things in efforts of fitting in and finding your place in the social hierarchy that was limited within the high school walls and zones, which all are super bogus to everyone. 
feeling like you needed to have sex before turning 18, or some local talk crap like that, just to feel popular like the hip crowd there, or some sh**. Sigh. It's with a few people who feel so deeply missing out of these things from their- He worked at a uh, place that made the concrete rail ties for the, you know, the high-speed rail in like other countries at 250 miles an hour. And it's a really shitty job, man. They didn't give you any PPE, you know, personal protection equipment. They're spraying manufacturing oil into the forms, you know, that the pour the cement into to make them. And that oil is all mist in the fucking air. You're breathing in and shit. <sighs> One hell of a job, that's for sure. The respective pasts that they feel needlessly. Like legit, the, the job, whenever you work there, I worked following the machine as it made the forms. And it dumps cement on the floor and you scrape the cement up and you throw it back into the hopper. Well, all night long, you're taking big old shovelfuls full of cement. You know how heavy that shit is. And then you got to fling it up above your head into a hopper about 12 feet off the ground. And then it goes back in there and you do that all night long. There were dudes from Brazil. They quit. So I, I can outwork South Americans if need be, you know, <laughs> urged they said fuck it i'd rather go back to brazil is what one of them said <laughs> to make up for lost time by rocking the teenage cradle or something frustrating yes just frustrating to everyone again i'm not standing up defending or even remotely condoning what these pedophiles have done i'm just offering empathized perspectives that puts forth a few points on how they can come to be flawed in this way also realizing and taking into account the possibility of local family history that might have scarred them for life that hit them later on, and similar. These situations can be prevented to help these individuals find solace and ease into taking on their new age-restricted norm they are forced to endure upon turning 18. Because when you think about it, we all wish we got a chance to do what we wanted to before hitting the big 1-8. The age of consent system on that is Temp services don't give a fuck about you, and there's always someplace new to go. Always someplace new to go. I've worked in grain elevators. I've worked building shelves. I've, uh, like, you know, setting up shelves in, like, bookstores and shit, the metal ones. I worked at a cabinet factory. I worked at grain elevators. I worked, I've worked at landfills. I've worked packaging fucking eels. I've done all kinds of shit, dude. I've done lots of shit. Is not perfect. And now we have the responsibilities to catch these few people for the future of the communities and the kids. Also on August 11th, Christine posted two photos of herself and a new kitten that had entered her life, naming her Posse. She soon elaborated that the kitten wandered into the home from the leader of cats in their backyard while Chris's mother was washing the dogs. Some concerned individuals who knew of Chris's living situation and past deaths. Of I've worked packaging vegetables, packaging fruit, packaging nuts and shit like that, making them holly, holly uh, them gift baskets, you know, for Christmas to have like an apple in it. And like, you know, they got nuts and little chocolates and shit like that. I made those. I've done so many fucking jobs, man. So many. You know, it's a really good job in California in the Valley. If. You're a ditch digger, literally. It's the easiest job in the world because it's like the topsoil there is like 12 feet thick. So all you got to do to dig a hole is you just jump on the fucking shovel and you get a shovel full of fucking uh, sand like every time. It's nothing. It's really easy to dig there. Of her cats allegedly reported this latest development to the Madison Green Humane Society, a no-kill shelter. Oh, yeah, I know all about all kinds of different companies and shit. If I had fucking all kinds of money, I'd be like a uh, Unilever after a few years, you know. I'll... Unilever owns everything, man. They own Nor noodles. They own all kinds of toothpaste. They own all kinds of fucking, you know, food and chemical. They own all kinds of shit. For abandoned homeless cats. On August 14th, through her alternate Magichan Sonichu Twitter account. Yep, and I'm good with people, too, because I was always meeting new people all, all the time. You know what I mean? I was never the same people every day. Christine announced, playing the part of Maju-chan, that he had successfully made his way fully into the real-world dimension of 1218, promising to release a video update soon. Maju-chan said, I've even worked uh, packaging baby clothes and unloading uh, 
like socks and shit from China off the fucking trucks and shit. I've done all kinds of weird shit, man. Clarified for a curious follower that the video address would be recorded after certain confidential circumstances were taken care of. The next day, when a Twitter user asked Christine what she did all day, Magichan replied on her behalf, stating that Chris took care of the household, went out as needed, and did a bunch of heavy lifting, in addition to her brain working between dimensions and worlds. He also wrote that Chris kept herself clean and proper, making sure to deal with her excessive perspiration when it arose due to tense situations. Pressure washing is a cool gig to get into. Because, you know, you can charge like $75 to pressure wash their uh, their driveway, you know, and steps and shit. And, you know, there's no work required. I knew a guy that used to do it. You know, you just sit there and hold the water hose. And you know, pressure washer goes. The artist, Ben Saint, then posted a tweet with a photoshopped image of Christine wearing a t-shirt designed by Saint in support of the 2020 U.S. presidential election candidate, Andrew Yang with Magichan denying the endorsement. Saint afterwards asked Magichan to consider voting for Andrew Yang as this policy may increase. One time I was catering and all night long, whenever people would leave partially drank drinks, we were dumping them into a uh, trash can and we gave a bunch of teenagers a fucking trash can of all sorts. <laughs> they drank that shit. I guarantee they drank that at the party. Christine's monthly payment. We made some 15 year old kids night, man. We made their week from the government and enable her to leave Magichan. Magichan wrote back that he was not amused by Saint's so-called meme and was confident that Chris would never leave him and that the Simpsons cartoon series character Lisa Simpson would become. Really that's awesome it's a cool gig it's really easy there's hardly any work involved and it's so satisfying to watch the fucking that black shitter you know the, the discoloration come off the sidewalk and shit it's it's satisfying president of the United States. Chris then went to the online chatting application Discord to change her username from Chris Chan Sonichu 1982 to Magic Chris Chan. Good night family, don't have too much fun. And Sonichu 1982. Over on Reddit, Jacob Sockness wrote that Chris called him while her body was allegedly under the control of Magic Chan and sounded fatigued. On August 16th, the supposed Magichan wrote a tweet thread reflecting that upon reflecting on Christine's past tweets, he concluded that the numerous brony analysts who blocked her in early 2019 did so on the basis of misunderstanding her past posts on Twitter as being malicious. He claimed that he personally spoke with TF2 Analysis YouTube series member Dr. Wolf, who agreed to allow Chris to become a member of the show for a short while. She drew a picture celebrating her achievements, which Magichan believed was seen by the analysts in the wrong light, and so promised to ask Chris to make a new apology to them upon her return from Quickville. He also urged the brony analysts to go to the Quickie and read through her archived past tweets starting from August 2018, linking to the Quickie article noting the events in Chris's life in the year 2017. After Christine supposedly returned from Quickville, she went to her own Twitter account to address the fact that the MLP creators who had blocked her at the start of the year apparently feared her and thought that she had malicious or even murderous intent, and denied she ever thought this way. She apologized to the creators for all she had said and done to have made her seem malicious, and promised to not talk about the matter ever again. Chris prayed that at a possible future convention, they could all meet on mutual good vibes. Also on that day, MLP voice actress Andrea Libman shared a section of the illustrated children's book Love You Always by Robert Munch and Sheila McGraw, writing that she considered the part of the story where the elderly mother still loves and holds her adult son like her baby to have been creepy. Magichan agreed with her sentiment. Further on, still posing as Magichan, Chris wrote that he helped her color in new Sonichu pages and revealed that Christine was working on a Sonichu expansion pack of cards for the Twilight Sparkles Secret Ship Thick Folder card game, for which Magichan allegedly contributed. I hate roofing, man. Fuck roofing. I've done flat roofs, torch downs. I've done regular roofs. I've done metal roofs. I don't like roofs. Roofing sucks. Work of himself. 
On August 17th, Jacob Sockness tweeted that he wished that Christine would manifest herself in front of him during his rituals and see how their relationship will develop in person, revealing that since her energy has hugged, touched, and tickled him, Sockness wanted to be able to tickle her back. He attached a doctored image of mid-2000s Chris laying on his bed as Jacob hugged him from behind. He also showed pictures taken in his dimly lit apartment, showing himself performing a ritual and what seemed to be apparitions of alien beings observing from a distance. Later on, Sockness went to Reddit and made a post in his personalized form or subreddit dedicated to worshipping Christine's message, Cult of Quick. He wrote that he had performed a ritual with the attempt of summoning Chris's soul into his self-made golem and protecting her with his powers, which included dripping his own blood onto a photo of Chris that was placed on top of the golem. He purported to have felt her energy peak in his apartment and gave the golem a kiss. Over on Twitter, Jacob elaborated that the summoning ritual did not successfully cause Christine to materialize in front of him, but the doll did have an alive feeling to it. He vowed to sleep with it to see if anything further would happen. On August 18th, the alleged Magichan, claiming to be in control of Chris's body, uploaded his first YouTube video on Chris's YouTube channel, recorded three days prior. Good day, everyone. It is I, Magichan Sonichu. I have taken possession of Christine's body as we have swapped bodies. Her soul is in my body, as you can see right behind me, on the opposite side of the dimension curtain. I am recording this today as definitely backed up by Christine's second phone. It's August the 15th. Which, on that note, should be the day I have uploaded this video, originally, long before I made it public. You could definitely tell that it is I versus, as opposed to Christine, not only in the vocal tones, but also my behavioral patterns. I love how Chris tries to use really big words to sound smart. Isn't that funny that Chris always does that? The dimension merge continues to progress. An event will happen very soon where my body fully comes into this 1218 dimension. And I will be swapped back with Christine. And everything will definitely further progress from there. It is quite different being in a human body, as opposed to my science body. Especially in the brain. My brain works a lot better. This brain, it needs work. But I am working on it. I am improving. Magichan procures a fidget cube and holds it in her palm. It wobbles as her hand moves slightly, but ultimately fails to fall out of her hand. Well, that aside anyway, still working on it. She's got power. I'm helping her find it. And she's borrowing my power too. She'll be making the journey very soon too. At this point, Chris is quite a bit more insane than Daniel Larson. Progress. Everything there is. We will all be able to see and coexist with each other very soon. At least at this point, my wisdom, intuition, other thoughts are able to be shared in this realm. So take that as you will. Be good. Be safe. Be kind and take care of each other. As the prophesized dimensional merge continued to elude her in her time of need and used by those with ulterior motives, boosting her beliefs so as not to break the bond.
After years of being tricked into believing alternate realities, it seemed that there was no one who could break the cycle and bring her back to reality. The stage was set for new players to enter and perform the roles that only Chris wanted to see. So welcome to another Cooking with Cobra segment. I'm your host, King Cobra JFS. Hey, Deacon, how you doing tonight? We're going to make some spaghetti and meatballs. Before we make the noodles and the pastas, we're going to make meatballs. We got some low-moisture mozzarella, and then cut them into smaller chunks. I want to fill the bowl up with them. I don't know how many times I'll say balls in this video. <laughs> Shut up, people. Fuck you, butthead. <laughs> Look at that. Yeah, buddy. So we're going to have to crack a couple eggs. Now we got five eggs in our bowl. Same. I got like three quarters of a joint on a Rhodes clip that... I keep lighting and fucking holding and forgetting about and it getting all high. I'm pretty fucked up right now. I'm, I'm pretty good and high. <laughs> Time to whisk it. Let's add a couple drops of the olive oil. Are you fucking piece of shit, man? We got some black label thick cut bacon from Hormel. We're going to use that strip for meatball. Uh -huh. All right, we got our meatball station set up. So I want to grab a chunk of beef. We're gonna grab a chunk of cheese after our meatball. And then we're gonna wrap it. There we go. Yeah, buddy. King Cobra cooking up some goodies tonight. There are our meatballs. Not for 21. Not unless you're 21 up. We're rolling the meatballs. An egg. Yeah, buddy. Sweet Lucifer, yes. I'll give it an extra coating of egg just in case. That looks dank. I'm gonna sprinkle some garlic powder, roast, cream, candy, meat seasoning on it. Oh, fuck me. I put too much on there. God damn, it opened up the wrong side. Fucking shit, wanking fucking bollocks. That happens. Fucking goddamn retard. I'm gonna work on my goddamn temper. That one right there. That shit got cake. That happens to me with the fucking pepper sometimes, accidentally opening up the wrong uh wrong hole and then trying to hit. <laughs> Let's slam it in the oven. So here we go. That butter will melt in there. Fuck right. Well, some of these are ready for the skeddy. Some of these aren't. Those noodles are ready to go. Nice. Chewy. Yeah, buddy. And now uh, we're going to throw some of that apothic dark on top. We're going to mix that butter up. Those are a skitty. We're going to add some more cheese to it. We'll throw some cheese in there. Throw some Doritos in there. Look at this shit. Shit, Joss got the damn wrong Doritos. Only Doritos I buy are the Cool Ranch. They're one of the very few things where the original's not the best. You know what I mean? Bacon wrapped meatballs. Oh. Kind of like peanut butter squared uh, Snickers are way better than original Snickers. Flip, yes. Ridiculous, YouTube. There's your spaghetti. Oh, you fucking piece of shit. Fucking. It's all right. It's cooked. That's all right. 
Oh, that looks good. There's our glass of wine for dinner. Let's try that. Right. <laughs> no, oh my god. No, oh my fucking god, that's good. Dude, this labor of love was worth it. Oh, my freaking good. Dude, this is some good spaghetti. Big ass meatball. That was just stupid good. Oh, shit. The dankest spaghetti you ever did see. Now, I want to put this in the fridge for later. Thanks for watching. What up, YouTube? We have a California breakfast crunch wrap with bacon, cheese, egg, guacamole, extra hash browns, tomatoes, steak, three cheese blend, and creamy jalapeno sauce. We got a burrito, which is a grand grande toasted breakfast burrito with bacon, eggs, potatoes, extra three cheese blend, tomatoes, steak, creamy jalapeno sauce, reduced fat, sour cream. We'll see on the burrito for a food hack. Now the breakfast burrito, we're saving that for a uh, food hack that I'm doing for dinner later. What up, YouTube? I've never had Taco Bell breakfast because I don't want diarrhea before noon. You know what I mean? <laughs> no, I'm going to try it one of these days. Actually, people say it's pretty good. Boom. I like Burger King breakfast, man. I like getting a sausage, egg, and cheese croissant with the uh, um, tater tots and uh, some of the Cinnabons. Those things are good, too. Made a burrito using that leftover Taco Bell burrito. Four pieces of bacon fried Spam. Cheese. Spicy fish, hot sauce. It was a ghost pepper Melinda's hot sauce, bacon ranch. Sprinkled the ghost pepper Melinda's hot sauce on top of some of that seasoning. Now it's bacon. Josh, you need to shave. You're not old enough to grow in that beard. You just, just, just bite the bullet and shave it. I think you shaved now. Didn't you shave? I think you shaved. In the oven. The fans sent me some fish too. That's the spam we used. The spicy fish in question is this one right here. I loaded the whole can into the burrito with like four pieces of fried Spam. The Spam pieces first, then the Taco Bell burrito that I custom made earlier. Then the cheese, then the spicy fish. But loading a Taco Bell burrito into a chimichanga that has fried Spam and bacon in it. The footage of it making it was not the greatest. It was just about done baking in the oven. I used a bunch of toothpicks to hold it together. Just like Taco Bell chimichanga food inception right there. But it's got the spicy fish, the fried spam, cheese, bacon bits. Another burrito in there, so that's gonna. None be of those things belong together in the same meal. Not even one ingredient. Being pretty tasty, I had to lower the oven rack so it could fit the burrito in there with all them toothpicks. But that's all right. You see me make chimichanga so many times that you kind of know the process by now. You want to see how I do it? Check out my chimichanga cooking videos. You know, the cooking video I had rolling this motherfucker was a disaster. I spilled toothpicks all over the place. I was like, fuck this shit. Keep in mind the uh, Taco Bell burrito that I stuffed into inside this giant chimichanga. It's got bacon and steak and eggs. 
And you know what's up. Now that it's nice and crispy, we're going to add some cheese and sauce to the top. Bake it in the oven to the cheese melts. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to put cheese here. We're going to add some, some more cheese. And then after we add the cheese, we need to add the cheese. Sprinkle some bacon bits on top of that cheese. Some ghost pepper Melinda's on top of the bacon bits and the cheese. There's already bacon ranch on the inside of it, but we're gonna hit it. It's a strip of that. And a sprinkle of our seasoning. Put this back in the oven. The cheese is gonna melt and get a little crispy on top of the shell. At least show you some of this action right here. Cut it in half. Look at that greasy, delicious looking burrito, all stuffed with goods. I'll be munching out on that all day, man. We'll try it here in a second. Just wanted to give you a close up of the goods. Fried spams in there, bacon bits, fish, cheese. Fellow YouTubers, it's your boy King Cobra JFS. I've been munching out on this here burrito. <laughs> I took a couple bites earlier and it was simply delicious. This massive chimichanga action. Oh, look at that. Look at that deliciousness. Yes. Mm. Mm hmm. Delicious, spicy, packed with protein. And calories and greasy love. Mm. However, I wish I would have cooked it for a little less time. But outside of that, it's not bad. Ah. Mm. I really can't complain because it's loaded with calories. Mm hmm. Spicy. And fucking bugs, too. Cheesy. Pack of protein. It's not bad, actually. Not half bad. Definitely packed with flavor, heat, and calories, and greasy goodness. I have plenty of amazing ideas for chimichangas in the future. However, I'm going to have to wait till I make some more of that cheddar. So that's how it do. You could feed a small army with this burrito. Sincerely, jokes aside, though, really tasty fucking burrito. What made it this way? What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story. Yeah, the fucking coves is dumb as hell, man. That boy got a 90 IQ, I think. Hmm, if I leave this out all night, will the bugs get on it? I can't eat. I, I don't eat food that sits out all night and shit like that. I'm one of them people that if I 
If I leave some macaroni and cheese in a pot out all night, well, guess what? I'm throwing that shit in the trash. I ain't eating it. Because I've had food poisoning before, and I've had salmonella before, and I never risk that shit because that salmonella fucking, I thought I was going to fucking die. Three of Christian. On August 18th, 2019, Christine, while masquerading as her supposed husband, Magichan Sonichu, had supposedly possessed her body, shared on his Twitter account the word of focus, according to her word of the day app. Luminary, defined as a person who has attained eminence in their field or was an inspiration to others, claiming that he and Christine were such luminescent individuals. Magichan instead could have inspired you guys think uh Cyrax and Chris would get along because of the bullying they've been bullying me for 15 years but they've been bullying me for 70 bitch for seven bitch others to check out this video sponsor Atlas VPN the virtual private network is running an amazing campaign where you can get a three-year subscription for only one US dollar and 83 cents per month plus an extra on August 19th, comic artist and YouTuber Ben Saint, who had previous links with Chris Chan lore, asked Magichan about an alleged city in Dimension C-197 that was harnessing the power of slime for endless gang violence, a concept Saint created and used in his own comics and online. Isn't it hilarious that law cows like Cyrax and Chris always give their fucking account information to anybody? Why in God's name would you give your password and account information to someone on the internet? What could possibly be the the goal behind that? You know, what's the end game there? You know, it doesn't seem like a very good idea to me. Immunity. Magichan took his concerns seriously and quelled his trollsome worries. Magichan claimed that there will not be any post-apocalyptic scenario caused by the slime for he had foreseen, checked, double-checked, and rechecked all possible timelines. On August 20th, Magichan wrote that there was a falsified death certificate for Chris's mother, Barbara, that should not be trusted, for she was still alive and well. He later posted a new photo of Barbara to validate his claim. When a Twitter user inquired whether Barbara had been told that Magichan had allegedly taken over Christine's body, Magichan wrote that she had, and had taken it very calmly, without any emotional outbursts or stress. Another user commented that her reaction may have been due to her suffering from dementia, a claim that Magichan refuted. When asked if Barbara could swap bodies before she passed away, Magichan replied that it was possible, but she was instead fated to have a quote-unquote dip in the fountain of youth. On August 22nd, he tweeted about the Japanese concept of otaku, or people who heavily invest in their hobbies and have very little social life. Magichan admitted that despite the messiness of Christian's room prior to the house fire of January 2014, in his own way, he made being an otaku cool for present and future generations. However, unlike other otakus, Christine was able to become a social butterfly in recent years. He further wrote about how Chris was an accidental trendsetter, as seen, for example, in her Nintendo game Animal Crossing documentary video from 2003, which may be considered as one of the first ever Let's Plays, and also her dance with Magichan at the 2017 BronyCon. Magichan applauded those who lived their lives while changing from introverts to social butterflies. On August 24th, Chris, under the guise of Magichan, wrote on Twitter that he was listening to the YouTube video series Chris Chan, A Comprehensive History, made by Gino Samuel 2.1, which documented Chris's life in detail. He alleged that according to the information in the videos, Christine successfully predicted the conception of Sonic the Hedgehog games that were solely released on Nintendo consoles. Later that day, Magichan wrote on Chris's behalf that she was currently watching part 4 of the Comprehensive History series, which addressed Christian's friendship with Megan Schroeder. He corrected the claims made by Gino Samuel that Megan had introduced to Chris, My Little Pony, and Sailor Moon, and that in actuality, Chris had watched those animated series during his childhood and teenage years. The next day, Null, 
the administrator of the QB Farms, revealed that Chris had suddenly met the next day. Look, look at this shit. Um, the only thing that Christine picked up new interest in from Megan was the Soul Calibur and Tekken OC and Yoshimitsu. He's saying he always liked the ponies and shit, and he's talking about Megan again. The next Who day, doesn't want him to be talking about her, you know? Hey, no. The administrator of the QB Farms revealed that Chris had suddenly messaged him. The contents of her texts were not revealed, but Null claimed that Chris became upset because he refused to refer to her as Magichan. Chris's thoughts and actions made Null sad because it reminded him of the mental decline of Terry A. Davis, a computer programmer with a strong following on QB Farms who suffered with schizophrenia, who after struggling with homelessness had apparently committed suicide in 2018. I'm a white man, I wrote my own fucking compiler, I'm not a nigger like Linus. On the 26th, Christine briefly returned to her main Twitter account to reply negatively to a Twitter user with a protected account who posted about the final episode of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, the conclusion of which Chris rejected. Members of the QB Farms theorized that it was because the protected account had approved Chris to follow them and not Magichan, hence why she had... Yeah, I think a lot of Terry's racism had to do with his mental illness. Because there's, there's uh, footage of him interacting with black people. He didn't act, you know. Which account through her image. On August 7th, Poe revealed that he had finished watching Gino Samuel's so-called chronological history series on Chris Chan and wrote a tweet thread regarding some past events which allegedly involved him. I will attest in those moments when she played split personality. Back then, I was in her mind. I was trying to talk to her, including I want out, Christian, and Christian, we both know what we want. We should let us out. The comments under that video, as mentioned in part 17, I typed those personally while in mild possession of her at the time. Bro, you I feel like these motherfucking sonnets are demons and shit? No, I don't know. Was the Christopher in that back and forth in those few videos? Also, when she was younger than seven years old, I talked to her through her nose talking, working as her vocal conscious. I have always been ever present and as guiding and helpful as I could possibly be from the C-197 side of the dimensional curtain. I could not get through all of the time though, and I knew she was. Fated to learn the difficult way through the many trials and tribulations with the online ships she had. I felt crestfallen every time when she recorded herself gay shaming, and I cried when she used the Bible verses to back it up. I tried to tell her then. It was a freaking parody, Christian. You were not supposed to take it serious on the Leviticus quote inspired by the Family Guy moment. When I typed in the comments of that music video, I was feeling frustrated. I have always known she was a bisexual. I wanted out in being free to love her as she was then, as well as being fully in Dimension 1218. She subconsciously knew she was bisexual, but she had felt really upset and adamant about herself back then. And the fact that the haters were throwing various labels upon her, aside from and including A, had no one called her any of the gender identity terms alongside the other negative adjectives. At CPU underscore quick sonichu would have more likely realized, understood, accepted, and come out as bisexual and trans woman a lot sooner. Clear a throat. Deep breaths. That is all for now. Thank you. Purple heart. Lightning emoji. Later that same day, Chris as Magichan joined the dedicated Christian worship form or subreddit Cult of Quick on the site Reddit as a moderator asking other members to share their stories of how Christine had positively affected their lives. The next day, Christine returned to Nothing her- Nothing is funnier than Chris telling you to worship, you know, that, that, them, you know what I mean? Uh, worship me. No, no. Own official Twitter account to retweet a tweet from philanthropist Bill Polt, who voted to grant $2,700 in cash to a random person that retweeted his message. Later on, she went back to her Magichan account and followed the account representing Jabba, an agency serving elders, caregivers, 
and their families. A Twitter user then wrote to her that it was acceptable to admit that she no longer believed in things she did as a child and did not have to make up justifications for her changes of thought. Magichan wrote, Linus Tech Tips did a episode on uh, Terry Davis. I might make a video on Terry Davis one of these days. I'll try and make him look better than he is. I don't know. <laughs> I might, though. I might. Terry's a very interesting person is why. Like, he all thought that he was God's prophet and that the computer operating system that he made, there was a program in it where God would talk to him and all this crazy. It's pretty fucked up. He's a crazy guy. He's definitely like Chris. That Chris realized this and would make sure she addresses this topic once she returned from California. When asked, Magichan elaborated that Christine was in Magichan's body in California, accompanied by her alleged spouse, the Pokemon Mewtwo completing more events regarding the dimensional merge. Also on that day, Magichan, while possessing Chris's body, wrote on the online chatting application Discord to Chris's supporter, Jacob Sockness, that he thought Jacob looked sexy while wearing a certain one-piece pajama. They went on to discuss a proposed trip to California, where Chris would meet up with Sockness. Finally, the supposed Magichan privately messaged Gino Samuel on Twitter, letting him know that the 20-part series at the time helped not only Christine, but Magichan himself in better recollecting the events of the past, and letting go of the negativity associated with the trolls before 2014. Magichan reflected that she has come a long way in her character development and thanked Gino for his work, looking forward to future videos. On August 29th, when an inquiring Twitter user asked for an update of the new kitten posse that had wandered into the Chandler's home about three weeks prior, Magichan revealed that in spite of their best efforts to take care of her, the kitten passed away. Yeah, he was he was on he said the the B word that blows up a bunch of times. I was watching some of it, then I stopped watching it on the Reddit because I was like, nah man, it's gonna get this stream taken down. You know, it'll take get the screen. I don't I don't want the stream to get taken down. Because he was saying all them keywords. Kind of like the other night on Marty's stream whenever uh, whenever Bill said the N-word until the stream got taken down. It was funny. Bill's like, I'm going to fucking say the N-word till your stream gets taken down. And then whenever he said it all, like, all them times when Marty said, fair enough. And then the stream got taken down. It was funny. <laughs> Barbara and Machan cried for her, even though he apparently foresaw that the kitten would not survive for very long. Soon after, Magichan posted a drawing he apparently made of Sonichu and Rosechu playing the MLP card game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Shipfic folder. On the final day of August, Magichan shared a new fundraiser on the site GoFundMe, made by one Alan Christopher, a fan of Chris and romantic admirer of Jacob Sockness, who resided in the United Kingdom. The $5,000 goal fundraiser was apparently to fund Christine's participation in Christopher's book series that would aid charities and programs supporting people with learning development problems. Part of Christine's duties in the project were set to be travels to the UK and Japan. Throughout early September, Magichan continuously posted new custom... The manager at the... Uh... Buffalo Wild Wings, he was applying for a job at, called the police on him, and Daniel took off running. <coughs> we might see Daniel start to run from the police now, <coughs> which would be hilarious. I want to see him get tackled. Cards that he and Christine made for her upcoming expansion deck for the card game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Shipfic folder. Some of the artwork was credited to Chris. While the Reddit's a cesspool, but I go there for certain things, you know what I mean? I... It's one of them sites that has porn and shit on it. You know, you don't, you don't really like going there. You know, you don't want people to know you go there. You know what I mean? <laughs> the others or Magichan's signature. On September 2nd, the supposed Magichan shared another fundraising campaign posted on the site Just Giving that was also created by Alan Christopher, which purported to be collecting funds for Christine's trip around the world with Christopher and his friends, in addition to creating more comic books. The next day, Christine resubscribed to the Patreon page of noted My Little Pony creator, Dr. Wolf. 
This drew the attention of some of Christine's own current and former Patreon funders, who criticized her for spending most of her time conversing with Jacob Sognes and even contributing to other Patreon creators, instead of paying attention to her own financial backers. On September 6th, Magichan reported that Barbara had her van checked and found that it needed repairs that would cost them $1,000. He asked for people to donate to Sockness's fundraising page for his proposed trip to Chris's house, hoping to use the funds for the Chandler's personal matters. Jacob agreed on the arrangement. This tweet raised the attention of one Righteous for Quick, a Twitter user purporting to be a supporter of Chris Chan, masquerading as a feminine LGBTQ-inspired take of the Halloween movie franchise villain Michael Myers who warned Christine to be wary of Jacob Sockness. Righteous would also post edited videos on YouTube praising and seemingly deifying Christine. In order to encourage people to contribute to Sockness's GoFundMe page, Jacob shared a four-month-old Reddit post that he wrote, purporting to be a transcript of a channeling session during which Magichan was said to have been controlling Jacob's body. Followers dismissed the conversation as a forgery solely conceived by Sockness, as Magichan's speech patterns did not match those as seen in his tweets or YouTube video. However, the purported Magichan on Twitter denied that during the session he was calling Christine her hubby, but rather her honey, but forgave the misinterpretation as channeling and telepathy were tough skills to master. On September 9th, Magichan, allegedly controlling Chris's body, joined the private Discord group for Sonachu Mania, devoted to a team of amateur developers who sought to create a mod or downloadable feature to be implemented into the game Sonic Mania Plus, which would allow the character of Sonic the Hedgehog to take on the appearance of Sonachu, amongst other proposed additional cosmetic alterations. Magichan proceeded to answer questions from some of the members of the Discord, with one commenting that the concept of all original characters existing in the alternate universe, even if they were simply thought of by the creators who did not commit their creations to the physical Guys, if I ever end up like Chris and think I'm God and all that shit, just put me out of my misery, alright? <laughs> realm, and that infinite universes contained infinite universes themselves, defied the laws of physics. Magichan told the Inquisitor that it was best for them to throw logic out the window and to not overthink the details of how and why. On September 13th, in response to a Twitter user asking others if they had any guilty pleasure waifus or fictional typically female characters that one romanticized despite some glaring negative traits, Magichan wrote that Chris's parents, Robert and Barbara, while they were still developing, were his waifu. He singled out Barbara as having been a guilty pleasure waifu, while Bob was said to have been a successful model in Dimension 1218. On September 14th, Magichan declared that Christine had just returned from California with Mewtwo and would regain control of her body soon. Shortly after, Chris returned to her own Twitter account to announce that she had regained control of her body. She then posted a lengthy pre-written account of her travels, noting that while in Magichan's body, she ran from Virginia to California. Along the way, she met up with her old friend, Anna McLaren, who initially was startled at hearing Magichan's voice telepathically. Afterwards, Chris and Mewtwo traveled to Jacob Sockness's home, who was said to have been civil and kind. Christine admitted to have been horny and sensual, and so she leapt into Jacob's body pillow fashioned to look like her, which allowed the two to hug each other. That fucking face on it. <laughs> Chris then recounted her further travels and adventures, which included fighting off demons summoned by Jacoba, the demonic entity introduced to her by Sockness. Also on the 14th, the Sonichu Mania developer group held a three and a half hour live stream on YouTube discussing the game Sonic Mania Plus and their development of the Sonichu mod. Christine joined them 44 minutes in. 
Oh, I've been here. I'm here. Hello. Hello. <laughs> Howdy. I'm fun. Um, I'm fun. Howdy. So, uh, Christine, how, was, how have you been? Oh, been doing pretty good. Been doing all right. Uh, Magic Chan and I have been swamped and been in each other's bodies the past month. I just got back from California. Boy, is my soul tired. <laughs> tell you what, here's a voice. Here's a, tell you what. Sonic, you just completed a level. Here's a here's your sample. Uh, so, Chris, what was the weather like there? What, what do you think the temperature was? Yeah, hey, that's the kind of shit I'd be asking. Him. For me, just a direct thing. All right, zap into the extreme. <laughs> Die, monster! You don't belong in this world. No, you, know, you belong in Minecraft dimension. <laughs> <laughs> You're a creeper. <laughs> <laughs> that's actually pretty good. <laughs> Uh, do you refer to refer to him as uh, Dr. Eggman or Dr. Robotnik? Uh, most of the time I go with Robotnik, because that's uh, what I grew up with. I agree with them. Robotnik is so much better than fucking Eggman. That's so lame. Fuck on Eggman, that's fine, but also, just in task, you know, his name backwards. Kinto Borer. Nah, I'm gay. <laughs> nah, I'm gay. You say it slowly. That's what it sounds like. No. Nah, I'm gay. Do you have any like preference on like for the Sonic Mania mod? Do you have any preference on who you would want uh, to take Tails's place? You take me, my Sonic you for Chris Chan Sonic you. I'm replacing Tails. I got the psychic power, so I can levitate. Okay. People in the in the stream chat are like, "Yo, Blue Spikes in the call." <laughs> <laughs> it's like he time traveled. <laughs> this is not Blue Spike. This is not Blue Spike. I personally confirm it because Blue Spike is dead. Mm. Good night, oh. everybody. Does this sound like a dead man to you? Can we get a shout out to Gino Samuel? Uh, Gino, I liked your series. Do Mad Do Magic Chat watching it and me catching up with it and mental link. It's a good series and it reminded me of the bad troll. Works well. At least you didn't offend me too much. <laughs> yeah, I think he's just doing the series for like documentaries sake. I don't think he like he doesn't want to be mean or anything. Gino Samuel's a really nice guy. Mm -hmm. Yes. I see that. He is. Mm -hmm. Oh my now I'm trying now my now the brain's trying to yeah, it is amazing how uh how impartial Gino remains during this whole thing. I think I really, I like that. You know what I mean? I think it's pretty cool. For one where I said something, where Gino Samuel had said something, I think he was trying, he was stiltily singing a song. And I think it was one of the more recent videos, not number 21. Although that was a fun epic burn from my father when he answered the phone part 21. They were just put to my daddy. But I got him. Mm -hmm. Oh, speaking of your family, how's Barb? He's doing very well. He's actually hey. quite capable for her, for her age and everything. Mm. The Sonic Mania group then quickly deleted the stream and abandoned the project. But QB Farms members managed to archive the stream in time and soon re-uploaded it onto YouTube. It was at around this time that Chris joined the The Place Discord group populated by a small number of enablers who vowed to win her trust by encouraging her beliefs and would in turn aim to protect her from malicious outsiders. The Discord included Chris's online friend, Maker Nightvi, Not, an alleged longtime minor troll of Chris, Kyle, also known as Nova, a worker at a suicide hotline, and YouTuber the WCT, invited to join by Not who is making a multi-part series covering YouTuber and mass murderer Randy Stair, inspired by The Chris Chan, a comprehensive history documentary series by Gino Samuel 2.1. Other members who held a less active role in communicating with Chris were Kiwi Farms moderator, The American Hedgehog, and Quickie administrator and former man in the pickle suit troll, Marvin. On September 16th, in response to Ben Saint's musings, Christine wrote a series of tweets reflecting on her infamy. Everyone seems to be compelled by me, especially the Christorians, any outsiders, and I, being meta, end up wondering, why? My earliest online content was a fan at Pokemon website, Quick's Pokesite, mostly my more than two cents on Pokemon and the TCG. Eventually, I added my Sonichu book- Oh yeah, he was fucking- pissed earlier and he was uh, <laughs> pages online 
the drama happens with me. He the was lo- angrier than I've ever seen Daniel. I mean, he was fucking mad, so he might go crazy on someone pretty quick. You're right. Locals take observation and later tell the stories and comment online. Before even the Yep, I'm on TV DVD on February 24th, 2007. The video content was light and spontaneous, and most of the future uploaded videos I made end up featuring rants, shoutings, and crap that would frighten anyone shitless. I recall that there was a mythos about me online. Myself, Chris Chan, I, I was an OC in my own stories. Was I real in this reality that is Dimension 1218? And then I was confirmed in late 2007 with that blurry photograph of me in a moment of great shock and stress. And everyone ended up making fan fictions about me, my family, my peoples, city, nation, and my Pokemon, including Sonichu and Rosechu. In a sense, while I already had my own chronicler, my DC superhero self counterpart in Metropolis, the Quick Cyclite, Everyone here in 1218 was all up in fanficking me, indirectly and directly attempting to alter my own life and decisions, as well as those around me who mainly originated here. Why is everyone compelled to follow me? The answer simply is that you all just do, in fated events, destiny, or whatever. Me? I have known all of my life I was special for some reason, counting being first person perspective camera 00000000001. I'm awakening, I'm learning, I'm developing, I keep getting stronger, better able, smarter, and powerful, and out of all the fanfic chaos of me up till now. Is it any wonder, as some of you put it cleverly, that Magichan, I, and everyone else of C197 needs to do a retconning. Just something to ponder over. Lightning Bolt, Blue Heart, Lightning Bolt Emojis. On September 18th, Magichan apparently returned to Twitter to inform his followers that he was continuing to converse with other people, many of which from the Kiwi Farms, and vowed to visit the site's administrator, Null, soon. Two days later, Jacob Sockness wrote that Christine was allegedly planning for a lot of fun for the occasion of his supposed upcoming visit, and that Barbara's birthday during the trip would be better than all 77 that came before it. A seemingly concerned Twitter user urged Christine to wake up to Jacob's arguably manipulative tactics. He denied manipulating her, but admitted to telling her lies that made her feel good. Looking forward to write on whatever may transpire in his book series concerning his experiences with channeling sessions and knowledge of demonic entities and alien civilizations. Later on, after Ben Saint began featuring Chris's unicorn self-counterpart character Nightstar in his comic, Christine acknowledged that Saint's storyline concerning Nightstar and Maleficent Slime in New Milwaukee in the Dimension C197 was actually happening. Over in his private Discord, Ben Saint revealed to his followers his plans to keep Christine satisfied with the way he incorporated... If Barbara wasn't completely in the fucking throes of dementia, she probably would have called the, you know, the pokey to come get Chris and take him to the hospital. ...her characters into his comic, hoping to eventually lead to Chris drawing characters or elements related to Saint's comic as part of Sonichu lore. Later again... In response to a tweet reply thread featuring people seemingly fetishizing people with autism, Chris replied that he was taken aback by the tweets, but also not surprised by it given the average and not average traits of people on the autism spectrum, and that she foresaw the tweet coming. On September 20th, Chris wrote a lengthy tweet thread explaining why Nightstar in Ben Saint's comic behaved villainously. Two days later, Saint shared four new panels for a slime-focused comic, depicting an attack on what appeared to be the World Trade Center Twin Towers of New York City that were destroyed on September 11, 2001. Chris reflected that 9-11 was not fun at all, and reminded Twitter readers that the images were in fact of the Twin Towers that were in New Milwaukee in the C-197 dimension, which were fortunately completely devoid of people. Christine then joined Ben Saint's Discord server, which also included Maker Nightfee. Also on September 22nd, Chris shared an online petition calling for the production of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 10. On September 23rd, 
during Ben Saint's livestream on the streaming platform Twitch. Members of the The Place Discord strongly discouraged him from interfering with Chris's life and attempted to blackmail him. I get it. People are mean yeah, to Chris. Chris That's what I get. Chris, uh, Chris is very malleable. Chris sure. Chris real friends. The less people that know about Chris, the better. To be honest. Cat's out of the yeah, bag, my dude. Yeah, yeah, I get that, but it, it just doesn't help. No, I don't want to do anything to hurt Chris. I promise. That wouldn't be funny. Okay, mm -hmm. these people on Twitter, they're in there, and they're like, Oh, Ben, quit quit playing along with Chris's bullshit. She's delusional. She's crazy. She needs to go to a therapist. She needs help. I'm just trying. I'm here trying to give her tough love because I'm, I'm going to fucking fix Chris and make her sane again. And these people are fucking monsters. These people are nightmares. I hate them. They're just there to abuse Chris. I'm just trying to have a good time. All right. I think Chris is fun. I like her. Sounds Honestly, cool. I prefer that you not do it at all because Chris is a person and doesn't deserve to be trolled constantly. I'm yeah, not trolling. Really I'm not trolling. I'm doing, I'm, Chris explicitly told me that she liked the crossover. She liked the idea. She wanted to see it. So I'm making it. How is this trolling? This is nuts. It just sounds really manipulative and not very nice because the way you're putting it anyway sounds really douchebaggy and I don't like it. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. He claimed on Twitter that their intimidation was for naught since he had no money. During this time, Saint was continuously posting new panels for his comic story, which notably featured Nightstar. This drew criticism from Jacob Sockness, amongst others, who felt he was using Chris's intellectual property for profit. Christine, however, told Jacob to settle down since Saint was doing no harm. On September 25th, Jacob Sockness posted on Reddit his itinerary for a one-way trip by train from Oakland, California to Charlottesville, Virginia on an undisclosed date in the year 2019. Accompanying the picture, Sockness wrote that allegedly both he and Christine were tested negative for sexually transmitted diseases and that he planned to video record themselves having sex and keep it private, vowing to destroy Chris's ass like carpeting bombing Germany in World War II. Tell me a bedtime story. <sighs> Christine. Members of the QB Farms managed to match up the arrival and departure times of the connecting trains on the trip to a specific route that would bring Jacob to Charlottesville at 7.01 p.m. on Saturday, September 28th, 2019. After this, I got uh, one more video I'm going to watch, then I'll probably go to bed. Form users debated whether or not to inform Chris or the relevant authorities about Sockness's arrival. Sockness then privately messaged Chris Chan-centric YouTuber Gibby, revealing that Chris said she loved him and possibly wanted to be his girlfriend. When Christine heard that Jacob was likely already on his way to her via train, she was convinced by members of the The Place Discord to ask him to turn back and then recorded a voice message for her followers. Okay, this is Christine Weston Chandler signed to you and I extend this message out to all the individuals who, ha who are actually not just all bark and no bite going to wanting to intercept Jacob Sockness on his trip to Virginia or at this point possibly back to California because I'm pretty much going to tell them that the uh, visit is off. I want you all to intercept and talk with him. Thank you. <clears throat> Chris then shared the recording along with a series of tweets. I am just beating myself up over this, but I feel compelled to say something now. Yes, I did indeed tell Jake to return home. And yes, I made the following recorded statement. I have had a really rough day yesterday. My soul, aura, vibrations, and psychic senses were hopping the walls with me. I even fainted, and Mewtwo had to possess my limbs to get me from my desk to bed. I crashed and slept for a few hours. And then to hear the more recent statement of him and my body just extensively heating up, counter-arguing, as I could, but I just could simply no longer overlook the red flags of faded warning. When your body gets hot like a macargo and it hurts, you do not ignore it. Besides which, 
My senses and psychic links have been seriously going off and on like crazy recently, so mainly on that, I ultimately chose to send Jake back home, and I made the statement to make sure he gets the message. I'm really sorry, Jacob. As much as I do love and care about you, it is simply too soon. Not long after, Chris wrote that it was fated and decided that Jacob return home to California and that there would be someone waiting at the train station in Chicago to hand him a return ticket. Stockness afterwards claimed that the itinerary he shared was faked and that he was in fact coming to visit Christine around Halloween time via plane. On September 26th, Chris wrote an alleged message from Sockness's alter ego, Michiro, directed at Sockness. Michiro stated that even though the journey to Chris's Sonichu temple was an escape from the evil influences of the demonic Jacoba, his alliances with certain nefarious characters served as a reason for his need to return back to California and to rethink his decisions. Christine then relates to Jacob that she felt terrible for telling him to go back home because she loved and cared for him. She added that she was not in the best health situation to take on a guest, and that even though she was immortal, she could still feel pain. Jacob then tweeted that he would terminate his Twitter account since his involvement with the dimensional merge ended in failure. He then turned to Twitter user T. Gasper, who practiced dark magic, and proclaimed that he would be Sockness's mentor. Jacob then sought to summon chaos in the aftermath of Chris's rejection. The following day, Sockness confessed that he was in no position to cause any harm to Christine. He admitted he got angry earlier because he tried hard to prove to her how much he loved her, such as spending $1,500 of his own money and losing 30 pounds of weight from stress and exercising, only to be rejected because of the actions of a troll. He promised to try reach her again with a friend at some later point. Chris then confirmed Jacob was on his way back home to San Francisco. On September 28th, Christine wrote on Twitter that she was feeling better, but still very vibrational and psychically sensitive. She added that she was aiming to attend the unofficial My Little Pony convention, BabsCon, with undisclosed friends, set to take place in San Francisco, California in April 2020, and was estimating the total cost for the journey to be two to three thousand dollars. She added that an official donation link would be later posted, and shared her personal PayPal donation link in the meantime. Jacob Sockness reflected that her attendance at the convention would fortunately allow the two to meet. A concerned longtime follower of Chris wrote that she should instead focus on paying off debts and saving up money instead of begging for it from fans. Hey, how you doing tonight? Yeah, I might stay up a little later. After this, I'm going to watch uh, the dorkly every power-up mix-up. I don't know if you guys have seen that or not. It's pretty fucking funny. Chris then logged into her Magichan Sonichu Twitter account to write that the family were paying off debts the best they could, and that Christine's attendance in BabsCon had been fated to happen so they could use the financial help. Another individual tweeted that they had allegedly conversed with Magichan, who told them that the funds Chris received should instead be used to contribute to a certain fundraiser to aid a baby's medical treatment. Chris replied, still under the guise of being Magichan, but mistakenly on her own personal account, writing that they should not say that they've talked to Magichan if they did not in actuality, insulted by the trolling but not malicious habits. The user wrote back that they did not realize saving a child's life was a troll move. Christine in response then donated $10 to the baby's fundraiser. Also at around this time, the Magichan account began acknowledging one Helena G. Fiorenza, who would post photographs with her drawings of Magichan placed into the scenes, post as if she was interacting with him. Magichan confirmed that Helena did, apparently, meet with him. On September 29th, Ben Saint continued to draw more panels for his comic, which he colloquially referred to as the Night Star comic. Members of the The Place Discord then confronted the alleged Magichan controlling Chris's Discord account about the comic, asking if Saint was paying her any royalties for using her character. Magichan then revealed that she was working on a 15-card expansion pack for the Twilight Sparkles Secret Chipfic Folder card game, which chronicled the events of the slime invasion in Arizona, as written about by Ben Saint. When accused of theft, Magichan defended him, given that he shared the panels for free on Twitter, 
but he had a Patreon which Magichan claimed was meant to fund a different comic project, even though Saint explicitly stated in the Patreon page's description that it was meant for the crossover project, combining his own and Sonichu's universes. On September 30th, Christine was witnessed arguing with a bot, or user-like automated system on Ben Saint's Discord server, which would output written outcomes relating to Saint's comic's malicious slime entity based on other members' commands. Finally, Ben Saint posted further comic updates, to which Magichan responded, reminding Ben and his readers that the comic was not a Nightstar comic, and branded Saint's depiction of deaths and abuse against his own original characters, Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk, as madness and cruelty. He felt that the slime was badly affecting Saint's judgment. Ben replied, writing that after peeling back the veil between dimensions. Sorry, I'm breaking up weed and paying attention. This shit's amazingly interesting to me. I like I like the Sockness stuff because uh, I've watched a few videos on Sockness and it's kind of neat. There's some stuff on here that Gino put in that I didn't know, which is pretty neat. He was simply depicting actual events, regardless of how violent they were, but was confident there would be a happy ending for his characters. Angeline! Don't go into the light. <laughs> that movie was scary, man. The fucking poltergeist movies, and you're like a little kid. That shit's scary as hell. Like when she has that dream and she's in the water with all the fucking corpses and shit like that. That was some fucked up shit. On October 1st, Chris wished her mother a happy and safe 78th birthday, posting a recent photo of her. They celebrated by eating at the Woodgrill Buffet chain restaurant. The next day, she posted new artwork featuring Ben Saint's characters, Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk, mentioning that Saint's chronicling efforts were falling behind those of Christine, who, with Magichan's help, had just completed the Arizona Slam expansion pack for the Twilight Sparkle's Secret Chip Thick Folder card game. She proceeded to post the artwork and description for her original cards, focusing on Nightstar and Chris Chan Sonichu's involvement with Saint's characters and the complete and peaceful cleanup of the malicious slime in Arizona via rains of bicarbonate of soda and sugar. On October 3rd, the supposed Magichan asked users of the The Place Discord whether Ben Saint was making his comic featuring Nightstar for financial gain. The others told him that he was. After listening to their input, he decided to then message Ben privately on Twitter letting him know that the slime had been cleaned up and vaguely criticized Saint's use of Chris's characters for financial gain. In return for his greed, Saint was asked to send at least $300 to Christine's PayPal account to help fund the printing and sending of the Arizona slime-themed Twilight Sparkle's Secret Chip Thick Folder expansion pack. Magichan closed by writing that he and his alleged spouse Chris were expecting a large donation from Ben within the coming weeks. Saint then shared these messages on his Twitter account and added new comic pass, claiming that the people needed slime to survive, and what Chris did was akin to genocide. Christine wrote back that the people would instead simply return to being human. After receiving numerous messages from other users, Saint made a post crossly ordering everyone to refer to Chris with she, her pronouns. Also on that day, Alan Christopher founded another fundraiser to help Christine get to BabsCon, with a goal of £4,000 sterling. On October 4th, the conglomerate toy and game-focused company Hasbro announced a 10th season of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, continuing the storyline of the cartoon series, though as a comic book only iteration. Christine expressed her displeasure at the news, demanding that seasons 10 to 14 have to be animated for TV as the protagonists of the show apparently commanded, and that the next generation of the show could not air until the completion of Friendship is Magic Season 14. Later on, Ben Saint, in a possible attempt to antagonize Christine, continued to post new images of the characters in his comics, suffering and dying from slime eliminating rain that Magichan and Chris created, pleading for her to stop it from falling. Chris, mistakenly writing as Magichan on her own Twitter account, clarified that the rain had stopped falling and everyone was recovering, and acknowledged that those that had died were the worst individuals. Hey, Kurti, how you doing tonight? Magichan told Saint to stop his memeing and harping on the subject, because his attempts at toying with Magichan's emotions did not work. 
Ben also tried to provoke Chris on his slime-focused Discord server, in which Christine was a member, role-playing as his alter ego, the Cop Killer, claiming that the rains had killed over 70,000 people and that Chris was spreading propaganda denying wrongdoing. On October 7th, she updated her Patreon supporters with new custom cards for the Twilight Sparkles Secret Ship Folder card game. Several patrons were angered by her first significant update in a long while, which consisted of cards that were only played by a minor subset of the Brony community and were not updates to the Sonichu comic books like they were expecting. Also on that day, Christine took Marky to kill, 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 that was some crazy shit, man, that was crazy. An online personality test, both as Magichan and as herself, and found that they were both protagonist personality types, though Chris was found to be more turbulent. On October 9th, Chris responded to a work of fanfiction concerning Sonichu and the character SNT created by artist and YouTuber <laughs> Project SNT. You know, fuck Ronald Reagan for shutting down all the mental institutions for people like Daniel and Cyrax and Chris, you know. Fuck. That's the worst thing in the fucking world, man. A lot of people don't like Reagan for a lot of other reasons. That's the reason I don't like him. You know, apparently guns and nukes are more important than keeping dangerous-ass motherfuckers off the street, you know what I mean? Which was written by OpusCon789 who was also Kiwi Farms user something random 987 After Project SNT streamed herself reading through some of the story on YouTube, Chris and Magichan finished reading it themselves and reflected that the events in the story in fact happened in Dimension R687 and criticized the author of the fanfic for failing to understand Chris's intentions, taking things out of context and grossly exaggerating. Opuscon789 also needlessly warped the minds of SNT and her creator, but as Solace was recognized for their talents in seeing... Yeah, Reagan sucked, man. He did. He, he's, he's not a very good guy. ...into other dimensions. George Bush was in the uh, the budget hit red hard, and they, they printed more money for old people's Medicare, $500 billion, and that was really the start of our downfall, actually for the reckless actions involving OCs from Dimensions C197 and 1218, Chris declared that Karma would bite their sorry ass for the great amount of damage they had wrought, noting that Dimension R687 was a great mess, where DC Comics superhero Batman laughed at everything his arch-nemesis, the Joker, said. Christine closed by noting she would not sue Opuscon 789. Instead, Fate and Destiny would complete and supervise over their punishment. On October 10th, after spending several days of drawing and scanning original Sonichus and Roastchus based on her online friends, Chris combined them I think we could do it now. I think that we could totally, uh, we, we, we're, like, we're less cruel to the mentally ill than we used to be, you know what I mean? Uh, I think if they reopened them, it'd be a lot better than it was back then, you know? all into a single doctored picture, depicting the supposed launch party for her new deck of cards for the game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Ship Thick Folder. Two days later, she addressed her haters who criticized her for making custom trading cards instead of the Sonichu comic books that people on Patreon paid her to continue. Chris wrote that people should be glad that she was making canonical Sonichu merchandise in the meantime before she resumed making more comic pages. Christine continued to live in her own world of idyllic illusion, though supplanting her famed comics with trading cards, perhaps to harken back to his younger years of playing trading card games. But now, instead of seeking the thrill of winning matches, she was enacting fantasies of matchmaking and romance with characters of her own design, controlling a game of love over which Chris herself had no control. Ah, yes, my old friend, bipolar psychosis. No, I... <laughs>did the truck already leave? Yeah, what's the problemo? I missed a comma and all the shipments got mixed up. All the power-ups are going to the wrong worlds. Hey, I'm sure it'll be fine.
Mario, call an ambulance. Something is wrong. <laughs> Yeah, the younger kids they say grippy sock, and grippy socks are the kind they give you in the nut in the nut house. So if they say grippy, they're basically saying you're crazy. May 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 this way. What is the attraction? What keeps us fascinated? This is the story of Chris Chan. Daniel's going to end up either in the nut house or jail within the next day or two. I guarantee it. It's going to be funny. Because earlier today, he went to a Buffalo Wild Wings, and the manager called the police on him and ran off. So obviously the manager knew exactly who he was. And they're like, yeah, that Daniel Larson guy came in here and he wouldn't leave. You know, and then the cops are like, oh, really? You know? <laughs> on October 15th, 2019, Christine shared a link on Twitter to a page on the fundraising site GoFundMe, which aimed to gather funds for her trip to the My Little Pony-themed convention, BabsCon. A Twitter user asked why did she not get a job instead to make money, to which she wrote that she was unemployable because of online haters, and that she was already constantly employed as a goddess. The Twitter user re I've been to jail, and uh, they need to not do the mats. Those mats they give them prisoners are bullshit. They should give them like a fucking air mattress or something like that, man. They there is not that's not humane to be sleeping on that mat for fucking years and shit. It's not. It's wrong. It's not right. No, but not even Cyrax deserves to have to sleep on one of those mats for five years, like in prison. Returned to reply that she would be fine if she left the internet and got a job pushing trolleys at a supermarket and that she was not unhirable, but lazy instead. Chris wrote back, Good for you, Marquita. You, 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 don't, you don't need drugs to fit in, you know what I mean? <laughs> that she was not lazy, but busy instead. Chris then blocked her critic. At the same time, artist Ben Saint, Yep, it ruins people's backs. It should be against the law. Just like their fucked up food, where they give them all soy protein and shit now. You know, if you're in the, in the hands of the government, they should at least hold it to the standard of, like, army food. You know what I mean? Continued to develop his comic story to focus on slime and slime-based character. The, the food in there is so terrible now is they wanted to get it down to, like, 22 cents a meal so they can have money and all that. It's because they don't sell cigarettes. Man, if they sold cigarettes there and they charge a dollar a pack, most people in there would smoke a pack a day. They'd make, like, there's five million prisoners. They'd make, like, five million dollars every day and they wouldn't have to worry about fucking feeding them a 20 cent meal you know <laughs> much to the dislike of chris who told him to go back to making stories about saints original characters phantom horn and strawberry milk on october 16th chris's devout follower and love interest jacob sockness proposed that she yeah no tweak makes you not the same person like one of my friends ran off with my friend's trailer for like three months and he's like, why would he do that? And I was like, because he's on meth, man. That looks like your friend. But as long as he's on that shit, he ain't your fucking friend no more. It remove all tears on her Patreon, wherein people paid less than $20 per month because it was uneconomical. He then vowed to pay for the orders himself, disregarding his trip to her house to instead try help her get the household out of debt. Later that day, 
Christine notified her paying supporters on Patreon that she managed to catch up with back orders of Sonichu comic books to be sent to her patrons, though she skipped the personally signed requests. As recompense for those who had paid for signed copies of her books, she would send to them her custom-made Sonichu-themed expansion pack for the ML-themed trading card game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Ship Thick Folder. During this time, Christine continued to busy herself creating more original cards based around the Sonichu universe, including one dedicated to Sturban Chu, a Sonichu created by the Idea Guys, and Robert Chu, the Idea Guys influenced Sonichu incarnation of her father, Bob Chandler. On October 19th, Chris commented on an update to a comic created by one of her enablers, Rosie Lilichu, which focused on Lilichu's original character, Liliana writing that she would prefer to see more than the one page per month of the story as was declared by the artist. Also on that day, a user on Reddit posted about his and his brother's experience with meeting Christine when they sur- Yeah, both my rich uncle's kids are really fucked up, and he had to raise his grandkids because the parents were all on drugs and shit like that. But he did better this time because the grandkids aren't all on drugs and shit like that. He probably learned you literally can't just give your fucking kid an unlimited credit card and expect him to make good choices, you know what I mean? Surprised her with a visit to her home, posting a photo they took together. He mentioned that she smelled a little like marijuana, though it is unconfirmed whether she was partaking in the substance again at that time. The Reddit user later posted an audio recording of their meeting on YouTube. Hey, you can see Chandler? Yes. Hello? We live in the area, sorry to bother yeah. you, but yeah. we've been fans for a few years and stuff, and thank you. thought we'd kind of give some gifts. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's very nice. Yeah, it's nice to meet you, dude. Yeah, it's nice to meet you. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. Anyway, uh, how you been? I've been doing all right. That's cool. Uh, we're doing very well, you know, just having a couple of the events. The yeah, I, and everything. I heard about the, the situation with the guy. Um, yeah. I'm sorry. I already hear about that. Oh, well, don't worry about it. Yeah, so we're all looking out for your best interests, yeah. and you definitely have our support. So, Thank you. Yeah. I love your blue eyes. Oh, appreciate it. I like your blue and green eyes, they're really cool. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah, so anyway, um, what the fuck is going on in the background here? It sounds like people screaming at each other or something. Uh, is it cool if you get a selfie or something? Or later that day. According to messages she sent to her friend via Discord, Chris's mother, Barbara, began experiencing high blood pressure and asked to be taken to the emergency room of a hospital, where it was determined that there was nothing wrong with her. Chris believed it was a combination of stress and the incoming magic energies of Dimension C-197. Also on that day, Jacob Sockness wrote that he was not destined for a normal life as he was currently chasing after his love, who was also a goddess, over the internet. Chris wrote that she too would not have a normal life, asking what normal truly meant. Jacob then shared a photo of two individuals cosplaying as the Marvel character Deadpool and horror movie icon Michael Myers, respectively, asking if he and Chris could kiss like that during their attendance at BabsCon. Christine replied that she did not want to cosplay as Deadpool or a zombie, but was open to kissing Sockness in the future. Sockness then posted photos of certification certifying that he was free of sexually transmitted diseases for her. At around the same time, Twitter user Righteous for Quick, a supporter of Chris, posted a combined photo of himself wearing a Michael Myers mask with makeup on and Christine standing against the transgender flag, taking part in the Twitter hashtag campaign to declare that trans rights were human rights. Righteous later created his own card for Twilight Sparkle's secret chip thick folder depicting himself and directed Chris to it on Twitter, but did not receive a response. On October 25th, she received her new custom-ordered decks of cards for the MLP-themed game containing the cards she designed. Also on that day, she discovered on her front porch the book The Legend of the Ten Elemental Masters by Alalilia a game developer who had gained online notoriety amongst forum subcultures some 10 years prior due to his eccentricities. Finally, on that day, Chris criticized Matt Groening and Seth MacFarlane, the creators of the animated series The Simpsons and Family Guy, respectively, for maintaining the unaging and youthful appearances of their characters when they have in fact grown up since their conception. 
Lisa Simpson, for example, was allegedly an adult by then who was set to become the next president of the United States in 2020. She claimed the creators were doing so for monetary gain, and it was criminal of them to mischronicle their OCs. Chris admitted that she used to act the same, but was reconciling, making amends, and dealing with many original characters across dimensions. On October 26th, Christine livestreamed on YouTube for 91 minutes, playing the card game Twilight Sparkle's Secret Ship Fic folder, utilizing her own custom-made expansion decks of cards. Yeah, that, you had that California dope too. Like I've been lived in a lot of states, and I moved to a state that didn't have good shit, and it was very easy to quit because it, it didn't do nothing. It didn't do nothing. Long time to set all this up, you know. Just uh, so yeah, as you can see, I have a few lovely big boxes for my secret ship fix folder cards now. That's how tall this pony deck is going to be. The one out of three decks is going to be this big. Now that's a mighty meaty sandwich. But yeah, you got pretty much, uh, I'm pretty much going to demonstrate a game of Twilight Sparkle's Secret Shipping Folder, albeit play Solitaire, which I have been able to figure out recently. Uh. Solitaire. Solitaire? <laughs> In case you're wondering what that was, that's our cat, Baby. Our gold cat, Baby. He has a bit of a nasal problem. We're, got, we're taking him to the vet. He's all right. Okay? We're taking care of him. So don't ask about that. Don't troll me about that. Do not troll me about that. Oh, wait a minute. Uh, wait! That happened. There's one! <laughs> Meth will make you lie for no reason. That's a, that was the one thing I really didn't like about it. You know, you just be lying, making up crazy shit and stuff for no fucking reason at all. It's just a myth. Oh boy. Okay, let's do a shotgun wedding now between Romeo and Sturdy. What? <laughs> oh, why not? Hello, Sylvia. There's our cat, Sylvia. <laughs> Yeah, table. And you can see how big this shipping grid can get, and this is why you need a card table, or you know, where the center point is an arm's length. Arm's length. I will see. Stay off the table. Ah, huh, thank you. Okay, game over. Of course, this is more fun when you got more than two, you have more than one player, and you're essentially clearing ships off of the board. Especially when you have one this full. This is full. I have a heavy bag here for you to put in the trash. I'll get to you in a moment, Mom. I love you. I love you all. Be safe. See you next time. Bye bye. Boop. At the same time, QB Farms user Duff conducted an interview with Ellie Hirschberg who had created several fundraising campaigns to fund Christine's travels. Hirschberg wrote that he loved Jacob Sockness and was waiting on Chris's permission to engage in a three-person polyamorous relationship involving himself, Chris, and Jacob. Ali said that he was banned from QB Farms for his dedication to Christine and that he fully believed in the dimensional merge after Christine gifted him with special powers, which allowed his third eye to begin opening. Publicly, Hirschberg hoped to save enough money to attend BabsCon in California and meet with Christine. You're from California. Did you ever hear him say that shit's like sucking the devil's dick? That's what they call it, sucking the devil's dick there. Calling or at her, least when I lived there. His friend who gave him his psychic abilities. On October 27th, a Twitter user whose original... I just took a big one and I'm out of breath. <laughs> character was made into a Twilight Sparkle's secret chip fic folder card revealed that they had played the card game in person with Christine, who gifted them a selection of the cards. Chris also sent cards to other Twitter acquaintances whose OCs were depicted in her custom decks. This included Jacob Sockness, who received two cards for the game as well as a greeting card proposing her love for him in which she wrote that her mother, Barbara, was holding on to a dolphin necklace that Sockness had sent to her, and that his donated money was used on fresh food. The next day, 
Chris shared the discovery of a convenience store called 812, riffing on the 7-Eleven convenience store chain. Since it was located in Jersey, the purported location of Gotham City of the DC Comics universe, she took it as a sign of the oncoming dimensional merge. She then went to her Magichan account and posed as her supposed husband and shared the recent convenience store tweet wrote herself, confirming further signs of the merge. Christine then reasoned with a Twitter user who reasoned that Gotham could not be merged because it was not located in Dimension C-197, since she had mentioned the World Trade Center Twin Towers existed in the aforementioned Dimension, yet were not referred to in any work from DC Comics. Chris argued that the Twin Towers in the alternate Dimension fell long before, and that they were not mentioned. I just looked up Moorhead, and it says, listen to this, it's funny. Moorhead is a surname of Scottish origin derived from the Old English word moor, meaning Marshall Moor, and hefod, meaning head. It likely originated as a topographic name for someone who lived near a marsh or moor. So like swampland shit. In the comics, because they were not properly chronicled. She then took back her previous claims and stated that the Twin Towers never existed in C-197, attributing her misspeaking to everything happening that day, making her mind, body, and soul busy. The enablers, Sarah and Steve, then proclaimed that they were frightened after Christine's recent posts regarding the coming merge. She came to quell their concerns. Jacob then wrote that he dreamed of Christine, the most heavenly goddess, and his beautiful one. Ha ha ha, though, you know what? I have Scottish ancestors, and uh, I have the coolest story out of all the, all the people that I know about my Scottish ancestry. See, in the 1600s, uh, my relative Robert Kirk wrote uh, the book, The Secret Commonwealth of Fawns, uh, Elves, and Fairies. And then one day, years after that, he went missing and people, the legend, you know, the locals say is, you know, he went to go live with the fairies and elves and shit. True love every night for she was the only one who could soothe the soul of a fire breathing dragon. That was himself. Chris admitted that she may have the power to tame such a dragon God, but confessed that Jacob was not one and merely a sorcerer and channeler closing by telling him she had a rough and active day and was too tired to think at the same time. Righteous for Quick posted a short looping clip of himself feeling cute after sending prayers to Christine. The next day, a user on Reddit posted a drawing that Chris made of her alleged neighbor and his cat on September 1st, 2018, claiming to share it online for the first time, though it had been posted on Kiwi Farms shortly after its creation. On October 31st, Chris noted for her followers that it was Halloween writing that the dimensional iron curtain between dimensions was really thin. During that same day, her online friend and enabler, Maker Night V, argued with Ben Saint about his continued use of Chris's characters and using his comics to mess with her. Saint angrily rejected Maker's claims, writing that he was writing an important story. Christine came to Ben's defense, revealing that even before he began writing about the events of the comic, her character Nightstar had already met with Saint's characters Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk and sent them to investigate the slime situation. She elaborated that herself and even her family were already involved with the situation and Ben was only drawing and sharing the events as he was fated to do, though he was criticized for deviating into an alternate timeline where he explored other themes she didn't like. Nevertheless, those events too were apparently fated to happen. Later on, Sockness tweeted at Chris a photo of a significant collection of free condoms. Chris did not respond. Maker Night V asked her directly if Jacob was visiting her as he had previously pledged he would. She replied that he was not coming to her house at that time. On November 1st, Righteous for Quick posted a doctored photo of himself in full Michael Myers attire and another individual at a Halloween party. 97 is a good age. My aunt Betty died uh, a few months, a few was it months ago or weeks ago. I don't know, but she died. She was ninety four. We all knew it was going to happen. She wasn't really all there, but uh, she definitely eat some food. You know what I mean, like some shrimp and you know the uh, barbecue. You know all that kind. Of, she she was an eater. 
party, with Christine photoshopped in to stand beside him, wishing that he could meet her. Chris did not respond to his post. Also on that day, Sarah and Steve publicly defended Jacob Sockness, as he had confessed to saying threatening things while angry and was ultimately not a risk or danger to anyone. Chris agreed with their statement. Sarah and Steve then suggested that devoted followers and believers of Christine may call themselves Quickens, who practice Quickenism. Chris commented that like archivers and students of her activities, or Christorians, her religious-like followers should also have a dedicated term to call themselves. She reflected that Christians and Buddhists were named after the leading figures of their religions, but in Chris's case, she identified as many things, such as Consul Patron Unit, possible goddess to the Sonichu and Rosechu species of Pokémon, as well as a possessor of a slew of other powers in Dimensions 1218 and C197. After thinking about the topic further, she concluded that Quickenism did not sound right for her, eventually considering the terms followers of Christian Sonichu, Fox, and Fockwix as possibilities, but felt that her followers could come up with something better. She soon after checked the thesaurus and found devotee as a suitable synonym for worshipper, thusly creating the term devotees of Christian Sonichu, or docs. On November 2nd, Christine tweeted about the vision she had in which her mother, Barbara, was not part Sonichu or Rosechu, and that after a few years, she would pass on and be reincarnated as a special female Rosechu. Also on that day, Kiwi Farms user, the American Hedgehog, posted three newly made Twilight Sparkles secret chipfic Folger cards that were shared with him by some unknown Twitter followers of Chris. Two of these featured photographs of interiors and exteriors of her house with drawings of her alleged spouses, Silvana Rosechu and Mewtwo, superimposed over them. The third featured a background image of Barbara standing in a room with her past husband, Bob Chandler, in his Sonichu form seemingly standing next to her. On November 3rd, Jacob Sockness shared an article which claimed that the Kiwi Farms willingly hosted future killers and had led to the suicides of four individuals, branding Joshua Moon, or Null, the site's administrator, the possible devil in the flesh. Yeah, you should take your uh, grandma and grandpa to the, uh, the Barbie movie, that'd be funny. <laughs> Chris then responded to Sockness's claims regarding QB Farms, noting that not everyone on the site was evil and there was some genuine good among the remainder. However, she did apparently recognize that there was evil in Null's eyes and thought it best for people to begin to take down the QB Farms permanently. Sarah and Steve then attempted to create a rift between Christine and Maker Nightvi after Maker asked Jacob about Null's actions conceivably as a means to develop a closer relationship to Sockness, who was being encouraged by Maker and others to be thought of as an untrustworthy individual. You're fine. Yeah, you know, no problem. Well, Jacob further wrote that his cross-dimensional alter ego, Michiro, proclaimed Maker Night V was... Nothing be wrong with being random. I personally have a very random and chaotic per uh, personality myself. <laughs> worse than the evil demon, Jacoba, acting like a manipulative demon. Christine wrote that she understood the claims and that Maker's future actions would determine her true intentions. Her recent comments drew concern from Maker and her other online friends, who were cautious of Chris being manipulated into thinking certain detrimental things, like during the Idea Guy saga, and being driven away from the people who had her best intentions at heart. Christine claimed to understand their concerns, and only wished for them to denounce QB Farms and escape Null's deceptive grasp though her friends stated that most of them did not have any connection to the farms, and only wished for her to willingly see that she was being manipulated by someone who was driving her true friends away. Sarah and Steve then posted screenshots of private messages they had with Chris to prove that her account had not been hacked, which featured a new photograph of herself solemnly looking at the camera with her signature lightning bolt, blue heart, lightning bolt emoji insignia lightly drawn onto her forehead. The enabling pair commented that there appeared to be sadness in her eyes. Christine wrote back that she had just woken up for the day, making the post at 12.51 p.m. local time. Later on, Maker Night V denied supporting the Fuhrer of Nazi Germany, 
Adolf Hitler, as alleged by Sockness, accusing Sockness of believing such things. Her followers proposed that Jacob was trying to create a divide between her and Chris so that he could control and exploit Christine. Chris wrote that Jacob did not make those previous statements himself, but rather the demon Jacoba speaking through his body during a channeling session. She stated that Maker needed to affirm her good intentions by working with Sarah and Steve. Jacob joined. You know, channeling and magic and all that shit is real. Why in God's name would you choose to be a channeler, man? Yeah, let's just let forces that could be anything just right up in our head. Let's do that. It sounds like a great fucking idea, right? The discourse to state that he was archiving the religions and history of Kidasuna, the alien world purportedly located within the Andromeda galaxy, the texts of which contradicted each other often, and that he was using quotes from them while addressing trolls. Maker replied that he created Kidasuna himself, based on pre-existing ideas. Chris defended Jacob by clarifying that Kidasuna was in fact real in Dimension 1218, and that he did not invent the individuals who lived there, but merely discovered them and established communications. Maker rejected the claim, with Christine further clarifying that Sockness did not create the Andromeda galaxy or the individuals who lived there, and that many times, his tweets were the result of nefarious characters from Kidasuna channeling through him, asking her why was the concept difficult to comprehend. Sarah and Steve separately told their followers that Maker Knight... Yep, the only thing people can agree on in every, in every, almost every religion is that uh, dark forces are bad. You know what I mean? <laughs> but a funny thing that most, a lot of Christians don't realize is, in the Old Testament... A lot of God's servants prayed for the downfall of their enemies. So technically, you can pray for the downfall for your enemies and you're not violating any of God's laws. Well, <laughs> he was being manipulated into turning against them and Christine, writing that people did this to everyone who supported Christine. They warned others to recognize the signs and not fall for their tactics. Chris retweeted their message, reminding her audience that people should keep their common sense, wits, and instincts sharp, clear, and calm as possible, so that they would not fall for the haters. I'm not Jewish, but before I went to like Bible camps and stuff like that, I've always been real smart. Like when I was six years old, I could read the Bible and shit. I read the Bible when I was six, and I read the Old Testament first. So I've had people describe like the the way a lot of things that I say is a little harsh. You know what I mean? Well, you, you know, <laughs> it shapes your personality if you do that first. You know what I mean? There's mind games. Later again, Righteous for Quick posted another doctored image of himself along with other members of the LGBTQ community, with Chris inserted into the group, depicting his supposed dream of himself and Christine the Goddess, forming an alliance. On November 5th, Christine went to vote in elections for the Virginia Senate and House of Delegates, posting a photo of her sticker signifying that she had voted. Also on that day, Ali Hirschberg claimed that... I'll agree with you, Kelly, but in Cyrax's uh, case, I'll risk it. No. <laughs> he was bullied and allegedly beaten by trolls who tried to manipulate Chris and turn her away from him. Their attacks seemingly included beating him up to the point that he required hospital treatment, receiving prank calls, and getting death threats on his social media accounts. Hirschberg was willing to save large amounts of money to ensure that Christine could attend the Vapscon convention so she could meet her love, Jacob Sockness. He you know what was hilarious? One time this uh, Christian lady was babysitting me, and when I asked her why the God of the Old Testament is so, is so much different than the New Testament, she slapped me in the face and started beating on me and shit. Well, you know, anybody who knew anything about you know that kind of history would be like, well, the Canaanites, Canaanites were savages that sacrificed their first children to Baal. You know, they deserve to die. That's all you got to tell the kid. You know, that's why they're different. You know, not everyone is sacrificing babies and shit, so they don't didn't deserve to fucking die. You know, Christine and Jacob, the best. Also on that day, Chris wrote a series of tweets hoping to rectify the rift that was developing between her most trusted supposed friends. Listen, everyone, please. I am very well aware of Jacob and Maker. They both are good people with the same goal of concern of my own health and well-being. Jacob is his own individual, but he is presently still easily manipulated by Jacoba. Magichan and I have been working. 
tough and hard to remedy that. We know everything about all this, and we have plans for counter defenses and measures should anything bad happen. But know this, I, Christine Weston Chandler Sonachu, CPU Blueheart, am not being manipulated by anyone. Well, you know, the Spaniards sure did win a few battles where they're outnumbered 345 to 1 and shit like that. Maybe God willed it, you know, that people came over here and, you know, people say, oh, uh, the church was bad and all that. They were fucking, they, had, they were sacrificing people to make it rain and shit. The Catholic Church is an infinitely better master than that. You know what I mean? For real, though. I remain grateful and most appreciative of everyone's continued concerns, kindness, and support. But we all need to stop fighting each other, especially in defending our Earths in due time. She further wrote that she was not going to break up any of her friendships or allyships, and highlighted that they should all agree that they needed to defend their Earths from the likes of Null and Jacoba. On November 6th, Chris remade the tweet directing business inquiries to her business email that was being managed by Null to instead ask people to contact her personal AOL email address, and also encouraged direct messaging via Twitter as well as receiving mail at her home or even personal visits. Sockness replied with his personal PayPal donation link, asking for donations meant for Christine to be sent to him. Dude, I'd rather be a damn Muslim than live under the Aztecs for real, and I don't really like Muslims too much, you know? It's the worst religion, man. There's a handful of these countries in this world that have human slaves and treat women like animals, you know, and marry kids and shit, and they're all Islamic countries, every single one of them, you know? The religion's the problem. To assure proper use. Sarah and Steve then asked Chris for advice on their Sonichu OCs, Sarah Chu and Steven Chu, only to be surprised by the revelation that Christine recalled the characters through shared memories and that they in fact existed in Dimension C-197. On November 7th... Remember when the woke squad was saying that hijab is empowering, but the first thing that women do whenever they... Uh... Whenever they take over a, an area that was controlled by ISIS, they took all their fucking hijabs off and burned them. You know? <laughs> ben Saint posted an illustrated image of his characters, Phantom Horn and Strawberry Milk, deceased and corroded from the slime eliminating rain that was falling on them, implicating that Chris's actions caused their demise. Chris wrote that the picture was from an alternate timeline, while the two in the main timeline were safe in Quickville and then in the My Little Pony world of Equestria during the rain, so they were not affected by it. Also on that day, Righteous for Quick posted a curious photo on the subreddit Cult of Quick, of which he was the head moderator. It was taken by a supposed fellow worshipper of Christine, which depicted a steaming sermon in a church-like setting showing three individuals deep in prayer as the video in which Magichan purportedly speaks through Christine's body is projected onto the wall behind the podium. Some, uh, someone on the internet said, uh, checks the news to see if a uh, terror attack has happened. Yep, worst religion strikes again. Later again, Chris posted newly created Twilight Sparkle's secret chip fake folder cards depicting the main characters of My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, describing their future actions and achievements as was to occur in her foretold seasons 10 to 14 of the TV series. Chris commented that she had not watched the three-part final episode of the show. Prover Proverbs can teach you almost everything that's in books like The Prince and The Art of War and shit like that. But it goes about it in a positive way, not a, uh, I'm going to make my enemy drink poison wine or send whores with diseases on his troops, you know, kind of shit. It would only do so after season 10 would air on the Discovery Family TV channel in the year 2020. And when Hasbro and the cast and crew of the series would confirm the news of the new season. The next day, spurred on by Jacob's proclamations of an oncoming war along with deadly diseases and nuclear attacks between the two dimensions, Chris confirmed that bad things would happen to only the self-counterparts of haters and really bad people of the Earth in Dimension 1218, as they were all isolated to a certain troll city in C-197. However, the Idea Guys, Joshua Wise, and Stephen Boyd would survive because they still owed Christine $6,000. Null and his pony persona, on the other hand, were fated to die.
on November 9th, YouTube channel 3GI, which had previously organized the multi-creator created Shrek Retold video, which had featured a contribution from Christine, released a trailer for their upcoming collaborative remake of the 1996 original video animation Sonic the Hedgehog movie, which also would be comprising of contributions from various creators. The trailer featured a short clip from Chris's input, seemingly showing Sonic transforming the Sonichu. Later on, after Chris Chan focused, YouTuber Gibby began posting video updates concerning Chris and the actions of Sockness and Sarah and Steve. Sarah and Steve made their Twitter account protected, so only approved followers could view their posts. Jacob then threatened to release Gibby's private information to the media and declared him an abuser of quote-unquote retarded people and transphobic because he did not address Chris by feminine pronouns. Sockness proceeded to post many short tweets, ranging from expressing his lust for Christine, who he found to be a mother-like figure, to voicing his disgust at Gibby, announcing him as his enemy. Also on that day, Ben Saint expressed his annoyance on his private Discord server after he ended his most recent comic on a cliffhanger, which placed his character Phantom Horn in a perilous situation, to which in Yeah, all those christian programs and shit they think they're better than you you know just because you fucked up it's sad but true response chris intervened in his storyline and drew a new trading card depicting them being rescued on november 10th saint hosted a four hour long live stream with chris on the streaming site twitch during which they mostly discuss their respective comic universes my little pony politics and religion should I should I name a couple more mods? I feel like the chat is blowing up with some some randos, some jerks today. Mr. Christian, Mr. Christian, you and I. Yeah. yeah. Um. Keyblade Spirit asks, I've got a question about the themes. Of like my uncle was a drug rehab uh, counselor, and uh, he uh, said whenever they come in and they talk about how they've relapsed, he's like, "Well, your brain cells are expanding so fast. You know, what do you need me for?" And I said, I was like, Uncle Larry, I was, I was like, you need to learn, you need to realize that those people are in a really bad spot in their life. It's not really your place to be making fun of them. You know, they've got enough to deal with without the person that's supposed to be helping them making fun of them. And oh boy, he got mad. Boy, did he get You're mad. Right. <laughs> Chris, I found that Sonichu deals a lot with collision, both literally and ideologically. There are all kinds of collisions, all seeming to lead up to one final collision in the dimensional merge. Uh, do you agree with that interpretation? Um, collision. Uh, I'm going to say among which, yes, uh, since we do break the fourth wall a bunch of times. That's true. And you have to collide with the fourth wall in order to break it. Yep. Yeah. All right. Okay, Chris, I don't know if you remember this, but years ago, I commissioned you to draw me something. Do you, do you remember this? You probably don't, but it's actually, you can see it right here where my finger is pointing on the stream. It's hanging up in my room, and I have kept it ever since. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, essentially what happened to Liquid Chris. Yeah, because he got pulled down the hole by the, um, uh, the devil trolls, and then we never heard anything more about him. And I just really wanted to know what, hap what happened to him down there. And uh, you answered it. I think this was like $50. This was like the best $50 I ever spent. <laughs> uh, I really appreciate it. Oh, uh, Kazzy Snap asks, um, are you doing No Nut November? Uh, that's news to me. I have not heard that. <laughs> oh you don't know about no nut november it's uh is in you just uh you don't have sex or masturbate th through november and that's it you don't nut <laughs> you know what that's every month out of the year for me so it's a <laughs> month. oh uh ali banjo twitch asks how are your psychic abilities coming along 
Very well. I'll eventually be able to show a better example, but they're really progressing very well. I'm beginning to levitate things much better. Really? At least I'm making objects light, very much, very lighter. Mm. Um, Magic Chan is he's is he living with you right now? Yes. Is, okay. Um, how's he doing? Mm, he's working very hard. He's making sure everything progresses in the merge and everything goes smoothly and accordingly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Good. Yeah. On November twelfth. Jacob posted a transcript of a supposed conversation between Magichan and Jacob's alter ego, Michiro, in which Magichan apparently foretold you that... Got, you guys like that uh, ICP song, Hallelujah? That song's funny as hell. <laughs> in order to conceive Chris's daughter, Crystal Weston Chandler, Chris was supposed to have sex with and impregnate her recent fundraiser organizer, Ali Hirschberg, who was female to male transgender. Christine wrote in, in one town we had legit Bible thumpers that I lived in. Like they would legit go up to someone who was gay and hit him in the face with a fucking Bible. Yeah, that was crazy what that people did that shit there. That Hirschberg was not likely to be the father of her destined child, and that the posted conversation was said to have been confirmed by Magic Chan to have taken place, but noted there were some discrepancies. Maker suggested that Magic Chan did not sound like himself in the transcript because Sockness made it all up. Chris rejected the claim, citing that Jacob's way of typing made Magic Chan sound different. The next day, Hasbro revealed their plans for a My Little Pony spin-off series called Pony Life, which Christine rejected, demanding seasons 10 through 14 of Friendship is Magic instead. In a plausible attempt to irritate her, Jacob theorized that Pony Life was actually the destined next five seasons of the show that Christine had foretold, a thought she angrily rejected. On November 16th, she posted a declaration rejecting Pony Life in favor of seasons 10 to 14 of Friendship is Magic to several different Twitter accounts that posted fan art of the new series, which she dubbed Go Pony, comparing it to the stylistically similar animated series Teen Titans Go. Oh, Chris, My Little Pony is old enough at that point that all the people own toys. See, that's why they're so concerned about their next generation or whatever, probably, because they're a toy company. So they want to get them buying all brand new toys, you know, not just hanging on to the other toys they have because they already have, you know, a little pony. Why are they going to buy that pony again, you know? Oh, in addition, she posted a selection of new Twilight Sparkles secret chip thick folder cards depicting seeming protests at Hasbro headquarters, attended by Chris Chan Sonichu, Nightstar, and the main six protagonists. One card in particular tells the story of Chris and Nightstar confronting the showrunning executives and demanding that they continue Generation 4 of Friendship is Magic, demands to which they heed. On November 19th, Chris's second garnishment case with second round sub for unpaid debt was filed, setting the next hearing date for January 15th, 2020. That same day, Christine posted on Twitter that it was once again time for the Chandlers to need more money, posting a link to her PayPal donation link, asking followers not to tell her to get a job or some shit like that. She added that it wasn't easy completing the Dimension merge with the restrictions and limitations of the real world Dimension. Imagine Barbara living here having to listen to this shit all the time. You know, she's so out of her mind that she doesn't even know what the fuck is going on writing that if it were easy, she would have fully entered Dimension C-197 and completed the merge over a year ago, so called for a stop to the hating and bad trolling. She soon after posted a photo of her mother. That's what the Power Rangers do by changing to the Dino Fury and all that. Smart toy companies, you know. Super Sentai is on like season 36 now, you know, the Japanese show that's all the clips that are Power Rangers, you know lying down and vacantly staring upward, claiming she was giving Chris grief regarding finances. One user criticized her for showing an ugly side of her personality, to which she apologized, citing her being tired and overworked as the cause. She returned to reveal that she managed to get enough donations to keep the family stable for a while. Later on, after an inquisitive Twitter user asked her about the C quarters and W quarters as seen in the Sonichu comics, Christine elaborated that it was an idea conceived by the so-called Christine Chan, 
Chris is self count. Yep, much in the same with Cyrax and Daniel. Chris too. No matter how how bad your life's going, at least you're not one of them assholes. You know what I mean? It makes you feel good. To part in Quickville, and the coins both equaled twenty five U S cents. Chris called it a crazy idea from Christine Chan, among many, but admitted that she worked very hard to defend Quickville. On November twentieth, Chris tweeted that she completed making the Night Star and Friends expansion pack for the Twilight Sparkles Secret Chipfic Folder card game, which featured a card representing herself, Chris Chan Sonichu, the so-called OC of OCs, depicting her drawing of Chris Chan Sonichu with a new photo of herself imitating her character's power pose. On that same day. Jacob Sockness confessed that due to poor advice from his sugar daddy or elderly sexual partner, who also provided him with monetary supplements, he did not have enough money to pay rent for his apartment in the near future, and also likely could not save enough to attend the BabsCon convention in 2020 and meet with Christine, who also seems. Isn't it satisfying that the same BabsCon that got canceled because of COVID told Chris just the other day, "No, you cannot come to any of our events." We don't want you here. You're not welcome, and we're refunding the money for the tickets you already bought. That was pretty funny. I thought that was hilarious. To not have enough money to attend either. The next day, Kiwi Farms moderator, the American Hedgehog, noted that the title of a 2010 Chris Chan YouTube video was cited in the Cambridge University published book Colloquial English: Structure and Variation, which listed Christian. I was like gold dust when I was a little kid for some reason. I don't know. This quote. Tito got no luck against wee Brits, Irish, and Scots. As an example of using the nominative pronoun "we" in an accusative case, on November 22nd, Christine shared a link to her new website, QuickVilleShopping.com, where she sold her custom-made expansion decks of cards for Twilight Sparkles Secret Chip Fic Folder. Twitter followers complained about the high cost of the cards, but Jacob defended her, claiming he was going to use them as tarot cards or a means of gaining insight into one's past, present, and future by drawing and interpreting cards. On November 26th, Chris livestreamed herself playing a solo game of Light Sparkles Secret Chip Fic Folder for one hour and 36 minutes. I am not reading your comments, so your hate is not being heard at all. Hey, Maker! Shout out to you, Maker. Here's your knifey. He's a good boy. And there's a cat. Off, boy. Here she's our little baby. Get off the table. But without further ado, let's get to shuffling. I'm not reading your comments, so fooey on you, haters. <laughs> Yeah, well, why not? Since this is a gender change card, we'll just say the wild rose to his male now. We have Jamsta. There's another jerk up. Sandy. There's Walsh. There's Walsh. Okay. There's the epic online party. Ah! Ah, the remnants of fucking Bruce Spike. Fuck. Fuck da. Fuck da. No, no, no. Method acting. Okay. Don't hurry, girl. When this go when three male and male ships have been played in a single turn? Okay. So anyway, after after this, also, I'm thinking my brain is going out of order. Nah. Essentially, what's going to happen is I'm going to be talking with. Vendors and online sellers, and who sell secret ship fit cards, and I'm gonna talk with them, and they'll, they'll, I'll let them sell my deck and expansion packs between their websites and at conventions, including BabsCon. So, at around that time. One of Chris's paying patrons stated in a Discord conversation that they still had not received any Sonichu issues as promised. They also noted that their boyfriend had sent Christine a letter telling her to stop trusting Sockness, attempting to bribe her with nine dollars. WCW was better while it lasted, with the you know Ric Flair, the Nature Boy, and shit like that. Some cool shit. Letters and some magic cards. 
on November 27th, after reading Jacob's most recent tweets, she confessed that even though she loved and cared for him, she could not be close to him due to unknown reasons caused by the merging of dimensions. She added that people should stop bullying Sockness for the things he said while under possession by Jacoba. After declaring news of a great struggle that was to take place between the Earths of 1218 and C-197 and the evil Rokot Empire of Kidasuna, she reiterated that she could not be Jacob's sweetheart and pleaded once again for people to stop bullying him. The following day, Jacob created a new Twitter account, Goddess Emmanuel, playing on Christine's belief of the feminine god creator and shared with her a falsified direct message from YouTuber Gibby he made himself, which purported to show Gibby's communications with Null, revealing that he lied about Sockness in his videos, was part of the Idea Guy saga. At the end of the day, our human bodies are pretty damn fragile, you know what I mean? And was directly involved with stopping the merge. Chris replied to Goddess Emmanuel, claiming that she knew of Gibby's vicious intentions and manipulations. However, her decision to push back Jacob's advances was not caused by Gibby's videos, and it was largely because Sockness had for the moment expended his usefulness. Chris remained confident that the merge would not be delayed and would not fail, in spite of Gibb bullshit. Also on November 28th, she made two tweets to commemorate the American holiday of Thanksgiving, writing that she was thankful to be in better communication with her supposed spouses and new people she had met over the year. Furthermore, she was thankful for her growing powers and the Dimension merge coming closer to fruition and her abilities to discern the legit from the bullshit. After a decade-long cycle of bullying, mistakes, and ill-judgment-ridden adversity, Christine found solace after rejecting the reality that treated her so harshly, greatly aided by individuals seeking some semblance of internet notoriety, driven by the misguided belief that they were contributing to a story of historical note. Chris's life was one that no one should envy, nor influence, for if left to her own devices, she may not believe it was possible to escape her consequences in search of a better life. I'm going to play the uh, the end of uh, Daniel's walk, and then I'm going to go to bed. This is funny, though. This is, his, this is what he said at the end of his last live. Here, let me full screen this. Share this tab. <laughs> I didn't mean to click that. I'm going to bed. Yeah, isn't he crazy? He's about to freak the fuck out. You see how pissed off he was? I have not seen Daniel that pissed off in a while. Well, hope you guys have a good night. Don't have too much fun. Later on. <laughs>